The views and opinions expressed by tonight's guest and topic of discussion do not necessarily represent the official policy or position of Spaced Out Radio. Spaced Out Weekend, Spaced Out Radio Limited, its hosts, syndicated carriers, or anyone associated with this broadcast. Any rebroadcast, reproduction, or other use of this broadcast or podcast without the express written consent of Spaced Out Radio, Spaced Out Weekend, or Spaced Out Radio Limited is strictly prohibited. Listener discretion is advised. Hi there, this is Dave Scott, and I would like to invite you to listen Monday through Friday right here on Spaced Out Radio. Three hours a night of the top stories with the top guests, ranging topics from UFOs to ETs, ghosts to Sasquatch, and everything in between. We are live every night, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. So come on in and take a listen at SpacedOutRadio.com. Spaced Out Radio will take you out of this world. East Coast. We are coming to you live from the magical mystery abode of Uncle Jimbo's cabin, sharing quantum space between the Pacific Northwest and the Desert Southwest, as it does every weekend here on SpacedOutRadio.com. We want to welcome in everyone listening on WQE 99 Rock the Key in Noonan, Georgia, at SpacedOutRadio.com on Spreaker, on the United Public Radio Network, Renegade Talk Radio, the High Plains Talk Radio Network, and on Revolution Radio. We thank... Our guitar god, Ron Bumblefoot-Thal, formerly of Guns N' Roses, now of Art of Anarchy, which you should go listen to because they are awesome. He creates the music that makes Spaced Out Radio Weekend rock, and we love him for it. Thank you so much, Ron. As you check us out on twist, Twitter, go to at Spaced Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like at Spaced Out Radio Show. On Facebook, you can follow me at Cosmic Passport with Elizabeth Anglin. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show. This is really important. People ask me this all the time. How do I hear your show? If it's after a week, after a certain show is aired, just go to the YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show, and you can listen to all the shows there. Tune us in on TuneIn. Download our shows from iTunes. We're also on Radio Guide FM, Talk Stream Live, and on Stitcher. And, of course, again, the website is spacedoutradio.com. Hey, we've got stuff to buy at patreon.com to help keep Dave Scott and the crew in business. We have some cool offers for you, our listeners, there. So make sure you check those out. If you want to take part in the show, you can sign into one of our chat rooms on Spreaker or go to the chat room on Facebook at the SOR Space Travelers Club. Tonight, we do have a call-in show. I am so happy to welcome... A good friend of mine, our guest Nathan Maine, who is a spirit transformationalist, and he has some wonderful things for us tonight. Tonight he's going to be doing some dowsing, and I'm just going to read a little bit about his background. Um, Nathan has been a good friend of mine. He's he helped me a lot back in 2008, just before the economy and everything else went a little, you know. Er- um, I was actually struggling before the economy went, and then all of a sudden, after working with Nathan, things got a lot easier for me. So I sailed through the dark times of the bad economy with very little trouble, and I, I think a lot of it had to do with the work that I did with Nathan with spiritual release clearing and other things that he'll tell you about tonight. But tonight we're going to be doing some dowsing after we talk for a little bit. Nathan is an ongoing student and teacher of esoteric New Age mystical and ascended master teachings. Since 1987, he has been a light worker and spiritual healer, as well as a multimodality hands-on healer and a mental, emotional, and spiritual energy transformation healing facilitator. Over the years, Nathan has developed tremendous spiritual and intuitive gifts, talents, and abilities, and this includes working with the higher levels of consciousness, angels, and light beings, and from infinite levels of spirit consciousness and his own divine presence. Nathan does have a divine purpose, which is to facilitate, to facilitate transformational healing and awakening to individuals and groups 
and to introduce them to higher principles and concepts that spirit intends humanity to have. This knowledge transcends the limitations of religious beliefs and allows for greater spiritual empowerment, understanding, and possibility. This new and old sacred knowledge is based on the, the spiritual principle that we are infinite and divine creator beings and an expression of the infinite spirit, infinite consciousness, and divine intelligence. So, Nathan, that is what I have experienced uh, working with you in group energy clearings and in Vortex Circle, and it's wonderful. Thank you for being here. Oh, you're welcome, Liz. It's my pleasure. Happy to be on with you. I have some questions about your background, even though I know you so well. Where are you from, and, and what's your what was were your early years like before you got into this kind of work? Well, when I was a young child, I uh, really felt like I was an island unto myself because I was I didn't know at the time because I didn't have the language or the references or the understanding. Um, but I was an empath at a very early age and. I was, would experience other dimensional realities. I didn't know it was. I just knew that I was different. And a lot of astral projection and uh, visiting other dimensions, having no idea what it was at the time. And then uh, I had to, as I got older, I had to kind of find some kind of sense of normalcy. And um, all that stuff really started to fade away. And... It started coming back in my late teens and early 20s when I was experimenting with uh, psychedelic uh, death with the drugs, you know, hallucinogens at that time. This is back in the uh, late 60s and early 70s. And what started happening to me was my chakras were being blown wide open, and I had some really far-out experiences at that age. And uh, where a lot of kids my age at that time were just kind of getting high for the sake of getting high, for me, it was a spiritual experience. So it was like an awakening for me. And uh, then I went on to uh, studying Eastern philosophy and esoteric philosophy and um, things of that nature, metaphysics, uh, up through my 20s. And then I discovered the Ascended Master teachings and studied with them in a Ascended Master of Mystery School for over 20 years. And it's just been a progression from there. Uh, I got into spiritual healing while I was uh, experiencing seances with the real Ascended Master consciousnesses. And uh, and then about, oh, I guess about 20, 25, maybe 25 years ago, I started doing uh, massage therapy. And that led to a number of healing modalities. And from there, I just started to expand and uh, really open my world into a new understandings in terms of spiritual healing and transformation and that sort of thing. And I've been doing uh, healing work for a number of years. When I discovered transformational work, which is a whole different vein than hands-on healing, what people think in terms of healing work, uh, transformational work, when I discovered it, I knew that I'd found my niche. And it just opened up so many worlds for me, and uh, that's what I've been doing ever since. So about 14, 15 years now, uh, my focus has been on transformation, and people don't know what that is. It's basically shifting consciousness. It's shifting out of the old into the new. It's letting go of old paradigms and beliefs and belief systems, detaching from all that programming and conditioning, and being in that energy in the space in which that we can really expand our consciousness and our understanding. It's an ongoing process of awakening and enlightenment. So that's where the focus is in my life, and I've, I really am quite good at what I do, and I love what I do. I, I can't imagine doing anything else. I really actually get high from working uh, because I'm tuning in to, to spirit. I'm tuning into the divine, and I'm helping people shift consciousness. I'm helping them shift out of the old paradigms and uh, experience some form of awakening. And uh, it's a process where you're just tapping into the energy of spirit. And for your listeners that don't quite 
understand that or, this or have come to this understanding, energy is spirit, and spirit is energy. And that's, a, that's as simple as that. And we have this phenomenal world of what I refer to as infinite spirit consciousness. And we're an infinite part of it, and it's an infinite part of us. And uh, at some point in our awakening, we have to let go of whatever religious conditioning and programming we may have had in this lifetime because it needs to be let go of so we, we can broaden our perspective, broaden our understanding. It's to let go of beliefs and belief systems because they do not serve us. They're all products of the ego consciousness. And uh, in the being in the vortex spiritually work that we do, uh, we've become more and more aware of this, this understanding that we are already infinite divine creator beings. We just happen to be having a human experience. Right. So that's my little, that's my little soapbox, and uh, I'm here on a mission from the divine to help educate people in the process of letting go of the old programming and condition, the old paradigms, and awaken into a new understanding that's, that's imminent and eternal. We are already that which we seek. And that's a new understanding uh, It's not necessarily taught in our churches today. It's still, we're still holding on to a lot of the old paradigms. And the world is shifting and changing quite rapidly. We're transforming faster than we even realize that we are as, as a human race. We're transforming. We're shifting out of the old paradigms into new paradigms of understanding expansion. Right. So um, just, you know, for a, a lot of our listeners, uh, just so you can have the perspective, we have a lot of paranormal groups, paranormal investigators who listener, listen, a lot of empaths and intuitives. And uh, you, when you're talking about paradigm change, I think that's part of our field is that we all have to have some experience that takes us out of the traditional social belief system, the traditional religious belief system, because all of a sudden we're faced with something that they don't address uh, in church or they don't address in science. And, well, well, there it is. It's right in front of our face or, or there it is. Or we're having an empathic experience. Nobody, no one addresses it when we're children. But what you're saying is, is that there are, to become a limitless and infinite divine creator being, actually part of the process is letting go any sort of cosmology or, you know, you'll, you'll move through cosmologies and structures of thought until they fall away and what's left is energy and creative energy. Right? Well, what's, what's left... For us, when we let go of our beliefs and belief systems and programming conditioning, mm -hmm. is a greater capacity for expansion. So what we know is when we uh, when we activate our energy fields, what happens is we get lighter and lighter because we're expanding, meaning that even the cells in our body are beginning to expand and lose their density. We can put them very, very light. And I've experienced lightness of being to the point where I couldn't feel my own body and uh, be around people that could just move their hands and arms right through me without harming me. Wow. Just like moving it through air. So I've lost all density in my body numerous times. I've gone beyond time and space where I could see all of creation and the universe, the universe is uh, revolving around me. So you would have the same experience. And then you begin to see all the, through all the veils that we see. See, in this particular third dimensional reality, we think that what we see is real. We think it's solid. Mm -hmm. When it's really not solid at all, it's just our perspective in the confines uh, and limitations of this third dimensional reality. But when we begin to see beyond that, uh, we experience this lightness of being where we lose density in our bodies 
to begin to see, well, there's a, there's a bigger picture than what we normally see uh, from, from the perspective of this third dimensional reality. There's a multiplicity of dimensional realities that are all happening simultaneously. And, and you did, I think, yeah. Oh, you, you, what's interesting is you actually have a, you have a way of classifying these. I've heard you do it before. You talk about the different, the 144 points of light, uh, so many energy bodies, um, so many archetypes. So when, sometimes when you're dowsing and you're clearing, you're going through these different aspects of, of energy um, bodies or energy states of being that exist, I guess, at the same time, but we're not aware of them. They're not something that we consciously look at from the 3D when we're, you know, just walking around doing dishes and tripping over the rug. We're not thinking about our four, you know, four major energy bodies, 144,000 points of light, 21 this. Um, so, <laughs> 20, you know, you have so many. I'm like, well, okay, I can't keep those. Well, we have, I can name some of the spiritual components. I can't name all of them because some of them are um, in fields I'm not knowledgeable enough, but they're, I can, I can talk about some of them. Okay. We have these phenomenal energy bodies. We have this phenomenal energy field slash hologram. What a lot of your listeners may not be aware of is that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And so what that means is that we have far more than our physical body we have 21 subtle bodies, and most people that have studied esoteric philosophy or, or metaphysics over the years have an understanding of the major chakras, the seven major chakras. Well, we have many more than just the seven major chakras. We have, uh, starting on the exterior working in, we have 144,000 points of light, and that's beyond most people's understanding or comprehension. And then we have 725 chakras and meridians, and these are energy centers, okay? And then we have 21 subtle bodies, subtle bodies. And most people that are studying metaphysics are aware of our mental body, our spiritual body, our uh, emotional body, our soul body, uh, our etheric body, all these various bodies that we have. Most metaphysicians are aware that we have at least seven uh, of these light bodies, mm -hmm. okay? But we have much more than that. We have a total of 21 subtle bodies. I didn't always know that that came to my awareness in the last probably 10 or 12 years. Uh, we have actually 21 subtle bodies, okay? That's part of our spiritual makeup. And then we have the tree of life is represented in our field. Most people are aware of the Kabbalic tree of life. That's represented energetically in our energy field and hologram. And then we have the Merkaba. And the Merkaba is like a, a, a tetrahedron, a double tetrahedron. And it spins. It actually spins. And, and some people that are highly intuitive can actually see people's uh, uh, the Merkaba actually spinning. Okay. And then we have the crystal lattice and what's referred to as the column of light. A lot of my physicians are aware of the column of light. Well, through my progression in spiritual understanding and communication with the higher levels of spirit consciousness, I've learned that there's actually an additional 14 spiritual components that are comprised within our energy field. And these can activate even though we're not that familiar with them. Um, there's an upper disc and a lower disc, and there's the Hierophant and the Christos. We have a number that I really cannot elaborate on very much, but I just know that they exist. Um, and, you know, sometimes certain knowledge will come to us, and we can't really elaborate on it. It's just in the knowing. It's in our understanding. It's in the knowing, even if we don't know that much about it in depth. Now, the additional spiritual components to my understanding, are utilized in different cultures uh, around the world. People that speak different languages and have different customs and, and 
cultural differences than we do also have a spiritual understanding that we do not have in the, in the Western world. So there's a multiplicity of spiritual components yet to be fully realized within this phenomenal energy field slash hologram. Now, most of those that have a little bit of study and knowledge of modern science and quantum physics and quantum biology have an understanding that there's far more to us than we can see with the naked eye, far more than we can even see uh, with the most sophisticated microscopes, that there's an element of our being that's quantum. It's beyond the physical. However, we've, it's been proven that it exists, and we're made up of that substance. We're not just physical as we would like to think. We are these phenomenal spiritual beings, and we're a part of the cosmos. It's an infinite part of us, and, and we're an infinite part of it. And we've been around for eons of time. We come from the very protons and electrons that the cosmos are made up of. We are that, and it is us. We're infinite divine creator beings. And we're, we're capable of phenomenal things that we don't even understand yet. And within this phenomenal energy field slash hologram that we have, this is how the ascended masters are able to dematerialize and materialize in a, in a completely different location, including on other planets and in other solar systems. Ascended master consciousnesses are able to do these phenomenal things, like walk on water and walk through walls and, uh, as I mentioned, dematerialize, materialize somewhere else. They're able to do these things because they know how to utilize their energy field, their hologram. Okay, so we're, we're not just physical beings trying to be spiritual. We're spiritual beings having human experience. We're capable of these, of these really profound uh, things. We have that, with that within our system, within our... Uh, we have access. Our abilities are beyond our imagination because, in essence... We are infinite divine creator beings having a human experience. In essence, that's, that's what we are. Now, I can prove this energetically. A lot of people will think it's just too far out um, to believe or co even comprehend. But I can prove it energetically with uh, muscle testing. I can ask first a, per a person and test them to say uh, terms like religious terms like God or Father, Mother, God or uh, things of that nature, and they'll go weak. And they can say, I'm an infinite divine creator being, and they'll go strong. So even though it might be beyond their understanding, by utilizing the body and muscle strength, uh, people can recognize that they're far, there's more, far more to their being than, than they may have ever heard or ever read anywhere. And it's really quite interesting for non-believers. Yeah, and uh, some people be, don't understand that, you know, when he's talking about muscle testing, the, the body tends, it, it resonates with truth. So that's part right, of the, it does not doesn't resonate. If something is not true, the muscles go weak. If something is true... The muscles go strong. So That's exactly right. And the body is energetically connected to really the whole entire universe through the energy field. And so, you know, when he's saying That's proof, right. it's energetic proof in that the, the body will resonate with truth. It won't resonate. The, the muscles will go strong with truth. They'll go weak with things that are false. That's exactly right. And you so. can test you can test a hundred people one after the other and they'll They'll go weak when you say, I'm a child of God. Mm. They'll go weak. When you even say God, G-O-D, they'll go weak. When you say, uh, if it's spirit consciousness, they'll go strong. When they say, I'm an infinite divine creator being, they go strong. Mm. I've done this 
in, uh, with individuals. I've done it with, in small groups. I've done it in large groups. And it never failed. I've yet to have it fail. Works every time. So the other thing that you do besides muscle testing for this is you also are a master dowser. You you just have incredible accuracy with your dowsing. How long have you been doing dowsing? Oh, uh, I want to say 13, maybe 14 years. Okay. About 14 years, I think. And, you know, I, I wasn't always a master dowser. This is, this is an expertise that's been developed over a lot of hard work over many years. I had to develop that ability through trial and error and uh, literally spending thousands of hours just working with spirit away from people that are you know, caught up in the human consciousness and just working directly with the divine. Uh, that's, that is the best teacher that I've ever had is spirit above and beyond, you know, all the library of books that, that I've had in my possession over the years and all the workshops that I've taken, I've learned far more just working directly with spirit. Mm. And, you know, we can all do that. I'm not special in that regard, is that we all have that ability uh, to open up and learn and to absorb and download from the cosmos. We all have that ability within us. It's listening on a whole new level and allowing ourselves to let go of this. If, if, if our listeners can think of in terms that, that their beliefs, which make up belief systems and particular paradigms, if they can realize that those are limitations, restrictions, and confinement that disallows them from grasping greater understanding. Beliefs are a product of the ego mind, and they impinge upon our field of possibility. They impinge, they intrude on our ability to expand into greater understanding and knowledge and wisdom. They block. Beliefs are filters, they're huge filters, and they block us from showing up in all of our glory and magnificence. They're products of the ego mind. And how do beliefs get started? Well, beliefs get started by uh, the habit that humans have in their human condition is to constantly be forming opinions, constantly be being, making judgments and assessments. And then they give more and more credence to it the more that they can get other people to agree with them. Somehow in their mind, they think it's true. And all they're doing is reinforcing falsehoods and misbeliefs. That's what humans do. And, yeah. you know, think in our human condition, we think if we can get other people to align and agree with us, then we must be right. And that's what religion is all about. Yeah. Relig religion is not about consciousness. Yeah. It's about the great dumbing down of humanity. So Dumbing down. Yeah, yeah th this group of people, I think we've all, we've, we all have a pretty open-minded um, most of the people listening, again, doing paranormal things, working with a lot of ghosts, a lot of spirits, trapped spirits, um, going to places that have, um, if, for example, James, our producer right now, he's at the Old Wheeler Hotel in Oregon, and they're having a paranormal conference there. And tonight, just after you, Skeeter and Paisley are going to come on, and, and they're both um, psychics. But I think our listeners are interested in developing tools and skill sets um, for working with expanded consciousness because they're interested in how consciousness, not just physical life, you know, life in the body is manifesting on earth, but how, how events and, and beings in consciousness, we talk about fairies, we talk about places that don't have ghosts, they have fairies, uh, remember when we were doing that group clearing out? I'll, I'll never forget it when the mountain fairy showed up and you were doing the group light activation. <laughs> and they showed up at the window and wanted to come in because they thought it looked good. You know, uh -huh. they like they they said, "Wow, this is good. We'd like that. <laughs> can can we come in?" Um, you know, the the do you remember that? I do. 
Yeah. I do. Um, so we have a lot of people who are working with different kinds of beings. And some of the people that I'd like to be able to call in tonight um, are are pretty much, you know, they're outside-the-box thinkers. Um, okay. Uh, so I think you can pretty much feel free to go wild with um, doing some dowsing for them and answering some questions if anybody has sure. any questions, whether this is a paranormal, you know, this could be looking at a site that you have uh, an idea about. Um, for example, if you've been out to a paranormal site and you want to know, did I experience the ghost of so-and-so there? Nathan would be able to douse that for you. Um, if you have wondered if you have any beings in your home, Nathan would be able to douse that for you. If you're wondering why you've been feeling off lately or why you've been more upset than usual, Nathan would be able to douse that for you. And then do some energy clearing work and transformation around it. So um, I know a lot of people are shy before they call in or before they ask on chat to have somebody look at something or work with them. So I guess I would use me as an example to begin with. Um, let's see. I have been told that my latest, and, and you can show people how you do this, I've been told that my latest illness is actually, it's its not where it's showing up, it's actually from my thyroid. What do you get on the energy on that? Uh, say it again, what's on your thyroid, please? Well, the energy, the energy dysfunction isn't from, um, isn't from my womb, it's actually my thyroid. And that if we okay. can sort of... If we can sort out the thyroid, the rest of it will sort out. What do you get on that? Yeah, there's some energy. There's some energy that's out of balance, definitely with your thyroid. There's no question okay. about it. And then sometimes when I'm asking like a yes or no question, you'll you'll end up with a, a certain percentage. Okay. Well, so. well, right away, you've got there. You've got four programs. Okay. Behind it. Okay. So with your permission, we'll go ahead and clear those programs. Okay. And then we'll make sure that there's not anything else there that that would keep recreating those programs. Okay. Here we ask that you please request that you please. Clear all four programs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you. And do those programs have any backup programs? No. Do they have any hidden programs associated? No. Do they have any systems? Yes. Please clear how many systems? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight systems. Please clear all eight systems. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the systems are what uh, duplicates, replicates, recreates, reactivates, retriggers, recycles, regenerates, and reproduces. Those okay. are the systems. When you clear programs, you've got to make sure that you're clearing all those systems as well because they'll just keep coming back and keep coming back over and over again. And, uh, Spirit, are there any fail-safes? No. Are there any safeguards? No. Are there any copies? No. Are there any copy systems? No. And is this indicated in... Uh, Elizabeth's life script. Any indicators in a life script around this issue? Yes. How many indicators, please? One, two, three, four, five, six indicators in your life script, Elizabeth. Spirit, we ask that you please, with your permission, Elizabeth will uh, will delete and omit those indicators from your life script. Okay. You have my permission. Please go ahead and eliminate all those in a, omit. Delete, remove all together, and strike them completely, totally, and absolutely from Elizabeth's uh, life script. Eliminate them all together, please, from Elizabeth's life script. Now then, thank you, Spirit. Now then, thank you, now then, thank you, Spirit. Mission accomplished. Very good. Now, you have to be really careful that when you talk to those in the medical field, mm-hmm that you don't buy into the conversation or the mindset that they might want to impose upon you. 
Okay. And tell you, try to tell you this and try to tell you that, and that you have to do this and have to do that, or you might have to have surgery or so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what happens to a lot of people that normally be curing themselves of uh, disease such as cancer, for instance. Those in the medical field will lay a particular paradigm on them over and over and over again to get them to buy into that idea of disease. And that happens to a lot of people. And uh, uh, whose uh, health is in question, uh, and that'll just get all created all over again because of what the doctors and everybody in that field mm-hmm. is telling them. So, so, so buy, just take what they right say. Yeah, yeah. But take it with a big grain of salt, a big. A very large grain of salt, and and you've had issues too. I mean, you you've had issues that you've healed yourself from in in the past few years, and um, you know. death experience who was never supposed to walk again and, and you know the first thing she did was get up and walk to the to the bathroom when she was supposed to be like you know brain dead and in a coma and um, you know the doctors didn't know well she was so light you know she, she was having it you know she was so light when she got back she could do whatever she wanted right. Good for so, her. Um, so you'll be happy to do this for any, anybody who wants to, if you want to ask, some, can you do this for somebody who's on chat, if they ask a question on chat this sure, evening? Absolutely. Okay. And did I hear James? Was that James I heard in the background? Oh, Christopher. Christopher, would you like to ask a question for Nathan to test? Yes, I'm interested in this. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I've been having some... Uh, Lately, some time of deep thought, and and today, like for example, I start to actually like see, like in scrying, I'm, and I'm curious if that's a new gift I'm getting, and be able to see visions and stuff. Now, are you referring to automatic writing? No, scrying, like seeing, like when your eyes closed and stuff, and see clairvoyance. Yes. Okay. I can definitely confirm that. Yes. Yes. It's a gift that's, that's developing. And spirits tell me that you have numerous gifts. And they'll begin to, to activate for you as you continue on in this process, allowing these gifts to develop. So there's talents, you know, some people don't relate to the idea of them being gifts uh, because ultimately we, these are all talents and abilities that we all have. And who's to say if it's a gift, gift from what, gift from who? So yeah, I know it's a common, it's a popular term, uh, but you do have particular talents and abilities. And, uh, you know, just one day at a time, just allow them to expand and explore them with an open mind and an open heart. And don't try to force it. Allow it to be organic. Allow it to be just part of the process of opening up. And don't try to force it. A lot of people think it's so important for them to be psychic. And so they take all these psychic classes thinking that they're going to become more and more psychic, more and more psychic. Allow it to come as you develop uh, your spiritual progression. Be more concerned about wisdom and understanding, and then these particular talents and abilities will begin to activate for you as you broaden your spiritual scope, your spiritual understanding. So be more concerned about that first and foremost, and these particular talents and abilities will unfold in a natural process where you have you have the spiritual understanding behind it. Okay? That's where a lot of people go wrong because they're not really focused on the right things. So I would advise you to be more concerned about your spiritual development and those natural 
uh, talents and abilities that you have will begin to unfold as they're, they're supposed to. I'm in no hurry, order. definitely. Okay, good. Yeah, but he's a, he, Christopher is a wonderful prayer healer already. So oh. he's already working with, with energy. Um, Beautiful. When he, when he does a prayer healing, it's it's quite it's quite a beautiful thing. So, um, yeah, you're Wonderful. working with with energy, which is spirit already. So, this, yay! This clairvoyance thing freaks me out. The first time it happened, it was historically corroborated. I was reading it in a paper, local paper of the house I looked at. Uh, so, something I'm happened looking. there. Mm-hmm. Something so, and happened there, and you, you saw in the paper that it happened there. Yeah, I was looking at uh, the house of one of my kin, and uh, coincidentally, in the paper it said that the house was in bad shape, and it matched what I saw. Oh, interesting. Is there anybody else? Does anybody else want to try this? Uh, I'm sorry, what's his name again? Greg? Greg? Yeah. This is, this is, uh, this Craig you're speaking of, James? Yes. Uh, by the way, I don't. I really don't refer to as negative or positive. Uh, there are earthbound entities, and there are beings of dark. What I refer to as beings of dark nature. So um, those are clear distinctions. So you know, negative and positive is really not the proper terminology when you're talking about uh, spirits. Okay. Um, So Craig has five earthbound entities that really are attracted to him because they they kind of see his energy as a connection to get back into where they belong, which is the spirit world. They belong in the spirit, spirit realm, not stuck on the earth plane. So what we're going to do is we're going to help them release themselves from the attachment of the earth plane, the third dimensional reality, and move on to the spirit where they belong. Okay. So we're coming, bringing some light beings right now. Thank you for this purpose. And we ask that you please extract these earthbound entities from Craig now. Extract these earthbound entities from any form of attachment to Craig now, extract them all, clear them all, heal them all, transform them all, educate them all, uplift them all, and escort them all to the most right and perfect place, ensuring that in no way they can ever return. Extract them, clear them, heal them, transform them, educate them, uplift them, and escort them all to the most right and perfect place, ensuring that in no way they can ever return. Now, done, thank you, Spirit. Now, done, thank you, now, done, thank you, Spirit. Mission accomplished, yes. Truth, the truth, yes. Did we miss anything? No. And does Craig have any beings of dark nature interfere with, with him as well? No. So they're not, they're, they're not what you might refer to as negative beings. They're, uh, they're either going to be earthbound entities from a number of different categories, or they're going to be beings of dark nature. So the breakdown is like earthbound entities are more often than not are discarnates. They're disembodied spirits. Okay, so when, they, when they're... Um, when their beings, let's say, passed on, for instance, uh, they should have been released and escorted into the spirit, and they were not, because perhaps because of their attachments to the earth plane. So they didn't get uh, escorted where they belong in the spirit realm, so they're still attached to the earth plane. And those are what's referred to as discarnates 
or they might be hidden souls or extra souls or multiple souls. Uh, they have a different a number of different ways that they show up in an attachment, or we can call them disembodied spirits, but they're still attached to the earth plane. And then there's what was referred to as beings of a dark nature, or there might be some people calling the show and want to know if they're being interfered with by any dark beings. And uh, that breaks down into a number of categories. There's uh, demonic beings, there's satanic beings, there's dark beings, there's other beings, other other beings, and rare and unusual beings. I just removed some rare and unusual beings a few days ago from a client. It's a rare category, but uh, they do show up from time to time. So these are what's referred to as beings of a dark nature. But so for Craig's situation, they were actually going to him looking for help. They had the sense that yeah. he might be yeah. able to help them move on. And so, it, it, you know, you can't say, well, you know, poor me, poor, poor, pitiful me. I get all these earthbound spirits who show up and then I'm all discombobulated because actually you might be their way to spirit. And, and you know, that may actually exactly. be a and good thing. You know, you're, yeah. you're considered to be a helper. Yeah. Well, they're, so. they're picking, Craig, they're picking you out because they see you as a, as a connection. They see you as someone that can help them uh, be released from the earth plane and get back to where they belong, which is in, in the spirit realm. So they're often, when they're just kind of stuck here, they're, they're kind of lost. They don't know how to get to spirit. So they're look, they'll look for uh, people that serve in some capacity as a medium, okay? And that's one of your gifts, Craig. Well, they're, they're, I can tell you this. They're attracted to Craig because they see him uh, as having the energy of a medium. That's a go-between. Someone that connects both in the physical with spirit. So he's a connector, the go-between. And actually, that's one of your, your talents and abilities, Craig. You're a medium of. Is this, is this Craig speaking? Uh, who's speaking? James. Okay. Uh, sure, James. James, you actually you have five discarnates, and the, uh, even because of your connection with uh, paranormal activity and that sort of thing, they just see you as some kind of a connection for them that can connect them with, with the right person that can help release them in the spirit where they where they know they belong. They just don't know how to get there. Okay, so we'll go ahead with your permission and make sure they get. Uh, to the most right, perfect place in spirit where they belong. Right. Uh, spirit House of Divine Person in our homeless. Spirit House of Divine Person in our homeless. High Self Spirit Committee, we ask that you please extract these five discarnates from their connection with James. Be they attached in one form or another, we ask that you extract them, clear them, heal them, transform them, educate them, uplift them, and escort them all to the most right and perfect place, ensuring that no way may they can ever return. Extract them, clear them, heal them, transform them, educate them, uplift them, and escort them all to the most right and perfect place, ensuring that no way may they can ever return. Now, then, thank you, now, then, thank you, now, then, thank you, Spirit. And uh, so that's a done deal. They've already been, yeah, there is a done deal. Now that the, the little girl, she also sees you uh, as a possible connection to help her get to where she belongs. She really wants to be with her family. And um, she's kind of lost in this 
in this third dimensional reality. So she's really uh, asking for help, uh, and we could do that for her right now as well. Okay. Okay. Talk to the Prime President and Holders. Uh, we ask that you take this little girl in your kind and loving and compassionate arms and release her from this third dimensional reality. And we ask that you escort this young lady to the most right, her most right and perfect place and spirit, her most right and perfect place and spirit. We ask that you release her now and forevermore into spirit where she belongs. Now done. Thank you, spirit. Now done. Thank you, spirit. Now done. Thank you, spirit. All right. Mission accomplished. She's released. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, there, Thank you. there's about there's a there's another fifteen disembodied spirits in that hotel. Oh wow! Easily, yeah. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Well, they're yeah. certainly not causing any harm. And, uh, you know, she probably feels comfortable having this dog around being that it was her pet for so long. So it's not really causing any harm at all. And if it makes her feel comfortable, so be it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're getting near to the top of the hour. People want to find you, Nathan, to have you do some of this work with them. Um, how can they do that? Where should they go? Oh, well, my website is transformationnathan.com. And the best way to reach me for inquiries would be a transformationnathan at gmail.com. Okay. That's my active email address is transformation at gmail.com and um, my website is transformationnathan.com www.transformationnathan.com right. and some of the things that you'll do and, and these are things that I've, I have taken advantage of over the years, um, personal clearings um, online vortex circles, we work with uh, the um, the Abraham Hicks information um, and also information that Nathan has directly brought to earth, has downloaded um, in order to raise our vibration um, toward abundance and service, uh, group light activations and other events. So um, I've received tremendous service from Nathan. I love sharing him with you. If you have anything that you're working on that really seems stuck He's a good bet uh, for getting getting that energy moving or getting that energy cleared. Uh, Thank you. Liz. Oh yeah, and I, you know, he's the one person we have this thing in the professional world where a lot of people won't refer to other people because if you have a bad experience with the person re you know referred to, you might lose a client. I never worry about that with Nathan. Um, not and and I don't worry about it because I think that the work that he does has been so valuable for me that at least I want to have my clients have the chance to experience it themselves. And, you know, if they don't like it, which never happens, um, you know, at least I did my best for them by referring them on to him. So Nathan Main, thank you so much for being here with us. Well, I had fun. The time's gone by so fast. It's like, I can't believe it already. It's the end of the hour. So 
but it's been a pleasure. And um, any time I'd love to come on and, and uh, you know, be of service in some way to your audience. I've really enjoyed it. Great. So thank you for thinking of me, Elizabeth. We'll have you back again. We'll see you guys later. Up next, two mediums and a large with James. And stay tuned. It is a call in all night long. Night, everybody. Nice to meet you, James. Good night. Hi there, this is Dave Scott, and I would like to invite you to listen Monday through Friday right here on Spaced Out Radio. Three hours a night of the top stories with the top guests, ranging topics from UFOs to ETs, ghosts to Sasquatch, and everything in between. We are live every night, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. So come on in and take a listen at SpacedOutRadio.com. Spaced Out Radio will take you out of this world. Hi there. This is your psychic medium, Joanna, and I would love it if you would join us every other Sunday on Spaced Out Weekend. With host James Tyson, we'll bring you personal psychic messages on two mediums and a large. Questions about love, life, career changes. We would love it if you would come and join us live. Call in and listen in for the experience. Allow us to open the doors to your other side. Two mediums and a large. Heard only on Spaced Out Weekend at spacedoutradio.com. Looking for news beyond the mainstream news? Head to spacedoutradio.com and check out the SOR Spacewire. This is Spaced Out Radio's Eric Markham, news director for the SOR Spacewire. Daily, I will bring you intriguing stories and outlandish reports from what's going on around the world. UFO sightings, paranormal activity, conspiracies, alternative health, and so much more. And if you have news, email me at news at spacedoutradio.com. Attention Spaced Out Radio listeners. For only $5 a month, you can join Spaced Out Radio Space Travelers. Your membership at spacedoutradio.com will give you access to a private fan area on the website, get you a monthly newsletter, draws for monthly swag, and a whole lot more. Sign up today to become a part of the Spaced Out Radio experience. The third Monday of every month, Spaced Out Radio is going to bring you a different look at everything paranormal. Welcome to the reporters. Jim Mallard, Vanessa Hogel, Denise Garcia, and Christina George join me, Dave Scott, for a look at the weird and strange from the other side of the microphone. We'll break down ghosts, UFOs, cryptids, and the people investigating them. The paranormal media has never been heard like this. Come listen to the reporters. It's paranormal news at its finest. Welcome to The Encounter. At spaceoutradio.com, The Encounter online is SOR's trusted news source for everything weird and strange going on around the world. This is news editor Eric Markham. Our team of journalists are scouring the planet for those strange stories that rarely make the mainstream. No fear-mongering or fake news here. Head over to spaceoutradio.com and encounter the encounter. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the place have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit and expect a miracle. Patrolling the Pacific Northwest, we are always on the lookout for the strange and unassuming stories that real people are experiencing. Hi, I'm Vincent Zunza from Pacific North Weird. Me and Alexandra Sullivan have teamed to bring to you those odd stories that never seem to make it into the mainstream. Stories so weird that we'll leave you scratching your head wondering, is this real? It's as real as it gets with Pacific North Weird. You can watch our videos right here at spacedoutradio.com. It's 
time to go live on Spaced Out Weekend. Thirteen, please. Oh, hi, Kevin. Oh, is that the time? Kevin, my friend, don't you find that watch just a little bit loud? Well, I certainly hope our buddy Bumblefoot is playing when we get there. Oh, you stinky big bundle of hair. I said Bumblefoot, not Bigfoot. Oh, it's going to be a long night. It's time to head to the 13th floor of the old log cabin for Spaced Out Weekend with James Tyson. You can tweet James at James Tyson SOR. You can find him on Instagram, Spaced Out Weekend, as well as on Facebook. On YouTube, our channel is Spaced Out Radio Show, and you can check out our website, spacedoutradio.com. Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. And now, perched high in his captain's chair, way above the clouds, here's James Tyson. Hello, everyone. It is I, just like Dave said, James Tyson, and I'm not broadcasting from my little log cabin on the 13th floor of the Spaced Out Radio Network. And I'm a little sorry for being late. I've been running around this lovely, but over ever sever. Ever sever, sever, ever so haunted old Wheeler Hotel. It's absolutely beautiful here. I tell you, if you want to kind of mix a paranormal experience with a bit of vacation down the Oregon coast, it's just south of Seaside, Oregon, and about $60, $70 cheaper than the hotels there. Plus, you get food. Yeah, this is a really good place. It's right on the water and haunted, haunted as you'd ever want. It's an absolutely wonderful place, and we're having a great time down here at the Oregon Ghost Conference, which ended it, ended today, and I'm hanging out with a bunch of real crazy psychics and uh, ghost hunters and all sorts of things. I shouldn't say that. They're not ghost hunters. They're paranormal investigators from Oregon Paranormal, and uh, what a great bunch of guys that are there, and I tell you, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I'm having a really really good time here and i i would hope if you guys all had the time you could come down here and uh we will we will meet and we'll all go do this again because this is a hoot there is everything down here goes bump into the night it is the crazy place like you heard from nathan on the last in the first hour he picked up 15 um entities in this building christopher i know you're on i need you to hit mute thank you sir i think christopher was taken he's got a bunch of dogs that sniff around his microphone i'm pretty sure that's how it works so tonight with us and for you it's two mediums and a large and i'm trying to push the large over to paisley and skeeter but it's just not working the (laughs) i'm trying honest paisley i'm trying i know you don't want to be the large but uh you know who's the boss here never mind you're the boss uh we (laughs) we have uh paisley and skeeter um now paisley is my card learner she is my instructor on how to talk to people if i'm reading cards or in my case the back of my business cards she has been doing this a long time, and she is your numerologist. And if you want a reading, a numerology reading, she's the one to go to. And if you're local at all, uh, you've got to look her up. She's um, been doing psychic fairs all over the place, and we had a great one last weekend in uh, near where we live, in, just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia, and it was a bit of a hoot. It was a lot of fun. And you can find Paisley at paisleytown.com. Now, Skeeter, the little Dickens, who's been down here doing readings all day, uh, really busy day. She actually healed my back where I had a back injury 
uh, as a policeman, I ended up getting a pickup truck in the rear end of my police car. Thought it was a big white truck that hit me, but that was actually my trunk in the back seat. And uh, <laughs> so I've got a little lower back injury. Um, she just waved a dead cat over me or something. I wasn't paying attention, but uh, the pain went away. It was absolutely fantastic. And at the conference, I met some fabulous people that you will be hearing over the next couple of months. Uh, yeah, I think I've got stuff booked all the way out to, oh, heck, uh, heck, heck where we're going to go. We're probably into July, June, July, with uh, some of some of the most fabulous uh, paranormal authors and speakers you're going to run into anywhere. Um, and they're all going to be here on Spaced Out Weekend. Right now, uh, we are waiting for Skeeter's um, steam-powered... Skeeter's at a hotel in Seaside. I'm here at the old Wheeler Inn in Wheeler, Oregon, and we are trying to, I say trying to, figure out how to uh, get our Skype working. Now, I got lucky enough with the staff here who let me plug right in into the into the actual internet, and uh, we're hoping that Amy, uh, as you were, uh, we're hoping that Skeeter will be able to get set up and... Uh, get hooked up here too. Paisley, how are you tonight? I am fine. Thanks very much for um, that psychic fair we had last weekend. You had last weekend. That was kind of cool. I like your psychic fairs. Yeah. Yeah, that was really nice. Um, what we're going to end up doing is... Uh, I, I probably will tell more people about your psychic fairs beforehand, especially us us locals who live in that area. And if anybody else out there on the other side of the world, if you're out in the wilds of Florida and you know somebody or you're having a psychic fair, give me a call and I'll be able to put in a word for you too with, well, mind you, most of the people in Florida are asleep as they should be. When I'm, when I'm talking. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, if you want, yeah, give me a shout and we'll we'll see how that works out. Uh, have you been doing anything exciting? I tell you, you should have been down here. This, is, this was fabulous. It was, they had campfires at night. Rocky has put on a really good um, conference uh, for the for the Oregon Ghost Conference. And like I said, there are uh, some of the speakers here. Actually, some of the pe speakers were people you've already heard on the show, like June Lundgren, who uh, kind of hunts down the, the more negative of the energies that are out there. And uh, yeah, some other people are just great. And this hotel, if you like haunted locations, man, you know, I've been in a lot of haunted hotels. With this one where you actually are seeing a dog walking around and what's really cool being with a room full of other psychics or not other psychics but psychics i can i'll see it out of the corner of my eye and they'll all say oh look the dog yeah <laughs> which is like okay it's not just one person everybody sees it at the same time because everybody's that kind of gifted some will see the full dog i'll just see kind of a a, a weird little shadow of the corner of my eye, but others will totally describe the dog that I saw last night or the night before. The night before, walked up and I looked down at it, a nice brown dog with a kind of a white mark on its shoulder blades in between the shoulder blades on the back. I blinked and it was gone. And I drew a picture of it and showed it to the owner of the hotel here. And um, she said, oh, that's my dog. He passed away just down the hall there about in a room about uh, six, seven years ago. I thought, oh, that's just interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, of course, a little girl who just, you know, I, <laughs> I blocked my room. I actually, I did, no, 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 hold on. I did the whole meditation thing, blocked my room, got up in the middle of the night, went to the bathroom, came back, and just as I hit the pillow, I heard, Daddy? <laughs> but Nathan crossed her over just a couple of minutes ago. But left, there's still 15 here, and this is where um, Oregon Paranormal, uh, they actually will do um, their, their paranormal investigation schools here. 
So it's uh, it's a lot of fun. I don't know. Um, I, I may ha I may have to give Paisley a quick, if not Paisley um, Skeeter, a quick call. So um, Christopher, Christopher, look at that guy. Yeah, yeah. Now you were. Uh, <laughs> It's about time you got on mute. But, um, yeah, it, it, as you heard, Christopher, that uh, Skeeter's um, indisposed right now because she's trapped in a uh, hotel with probably with really poor Wi-Fi, and uh, she's having a problem getting her, her uh, Skype up. So I'm going to give her a shout here um, via uh, regular landline. What am I thinking? Landline. Telephone. And uh, we'll see how that goes. And... Uh, and we'll get going. And you're first in line here. I've got... Hello, Skeeter. Hi, you're... I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> you are loud and clear. Unfortunately, we're not allowed to... We're not allowed to. We're not going to be able to get hold of you on your Skype due to your your wonky internet, I think. A naughty thing. If for our listener, that's what Skeeter sounds like when she's really, really upset and about to throw something through a window. <laughs> naughty thing replaces most of those words that you hear a mechanic say when he drops a wrench on his toe. That's Skeeter's way of taking a deep breath and naughty things. <laughs> Crazy. Did, you had a good time today? Did a lot of readings at the. Ghost conference? Oh, wow. Oh, hey, you know what, Skeeter? I just got a text from you saying you're running back to the hotel now. <laughs> and that was uh, 20, 25 minutes ago. So that's how communications work. You did? <laughs> yeah, okay, take a nap. Christopher, we have Skeeter. We have Paisley. What is it you'd like? Or are you just listening? <laughs> Who can't? That folks can't hear... Uh all, oh, all the people. They can't hear Skeeter or you or um, Paisley. Paisley. Okay. Yeah, we fixed that. We just, we took the, it was a cover on the, on the um, device. It, it was a sheet. It was a haunted sheet. So we moved it off and everyone will be able to hear now. But uh, Skeeter was just saying that she had a run back to the, she actually ran to the hotel. She was doing readings all over the place. Um, yeah, it's it was a wonderful event, um, and Paisley, you had a wonderful event last weekend. I'm sure someone else is going to have one. This summer, for me, is I'll be bouncing all over the place. We have uh, a number of paranormal um, conferences that I'll be going to, uh, one in Port Gamble in September. We've got the one up in, of course, uh, Concrete, Washington. Uh, I've got another uh, Pacific Northwest Sasquatch conference and then I'm going to Sturgis on my motorcycle which has got nothing to do with any of this but uh, <laughs> it's going to be a, it's going to be a good exploration I'm going to take my gear with me I did run my my microphone in the, my room the first the second night and it, it's good for about seven hours of recording and at two hours and 43 minutes it turned off by itself which is awkward. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah. which is funny. The next day, the hotel owner, Katie, said, so, uh, her boyfriend, Jay, said, uh, so did you run a tape? And I said, yeah. And he said, so to turn off? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you know that? He says, it happens. So <laughs> it's not, it's not like it's, uh, a mystery on what is going on around this building. And then Nathan said there were 15 uh, 
spirits in here still. So it's a pretty good place. A very good place to come and poke fun at the dead. And that's it. That's my day. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, the, <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you uh, if you'd like to call in. And uh, yes, I am talking to you. If you'd like to call in, please give us a shout at 575-694-6634. Again, 575-694-6634. And if you're out of the North America, give me a call on Skype. James underscore Tyson 32. James underscore Tyson 32. Give us a call, two mediums and a large, and we will get you red. Um, or blue, depends on how fast you call in here. Uh, we'll get your reading uh, by Skeeter, who has got a black belt in reading and healing. I was telling them, he, Skeeter, about you fixing my back. Oh, good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we were, <laughs> yeah I'm glad to hear it's, it's better. Yeah, it definitely is. Holy cow. I'm not going to go play football again, but... Uh, yeah, it definitely was feeling a lot better, and it's not the pain's not going right down my leg anymore. So uh, that's kind of help. Awesome. That's kind of helping. So if you are in any of our chat rooms on Skype, um, there as you were, yeah, well, actually there are people on Skype here. Uh, if you're in this in spaced out radio chat room, spaced out um, SOR travelers. Uh, check the phone number there, the 575-694-6634, and Skype. Uh, those in the Spreaker chat, same thing. I think I posted it a little while ago in there. And uh, we are also um, in the Spaced Out Radio, uh, spacedoutradio.com. Uh, we've got it posted there. So we've got, I've got a few, few of the uh, locations covered here. Um, I do want to thank everybody who's following us down in the greater Atlanta area at WQEE, Rock the Key FM, and uh, a lot of the people down there. I want to give a shout out to somebody down in um, is it Marietta, Georgia, um, Anna Davis, and she's one of our caller our listeners down there, and big big shout out to you and Doug, who doesn't want his last name given, who is up in the middle of the morning in the sweet early hours, about five a.m. in uh, Manchester in the UK, Manchester, Great Britain. He is up and at him, ready to go to work Monday morning. So great, big shout out to you guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for dropping by. Again, if you want to give us a call, usually this is the point where we get 30 or 40 calls coming in and a bunch of them drop off. And, of course, tonight we're not getting any in. So, Skeeter. Yes. Hi. Are you guys you busy? Hi. Okay, good. No. Uh, <laughs> I think you're listening to you and your, your calming, comforting voice. My calming, comforting <laughs> Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Skeeter, what you missed in the first part, Nathan, who was a guest of uh, Elizabeth's, uh, crossed over the little girl who called me Daddy. Um, and five oh. five uh, attachments that I had uh, just wanting to, thinking that I could help them across. And the only thing I did was talk to Nathan, who helped them across. So that... I guess it worked for them, and uh, I wonder if I have yeah. room now for more, which is a little bit awkward, but uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. It's amazing what I, I may have brought home from uh, the actual event itself. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> it was a good night. It's, uh, it's been a good couple of days there and uh, met some really good people. Do you see anything... Um, in in your readings, uh, could you describe what kind of readings they really are uh, and how you focus to get these done? Oh, do you mean those big heavy ones I do where I make people cry? Yeah, one of those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, what it is, is I call it opening the door. 
and I use a mix of three things. Um, one, I, I use psychometry, and for those of you who have been listening and following um, Paisley for a long time, you already know what that is. And I use a Japanese light touch healing method called Jinshin Jutsu. It's very similar to Reiki. I called it Reiki and acupuncture had a baby because you use a lot of the similar points that um, acupuncture have, but you use the energy work that Reiki does. And I also use the fact that I'm a medium and I use whatever guides or spirits that come through to help guide me to mix these three things together to literally crack open the person in front of me and help them get back on their path, Um, help them see what steps they need to do and warn them that they're at a point where you've either got to make it or you're going to break it. Um, It's a really interesting process. I touch a point, it's either the three point, which is opening the door, um, bringing things in the balance, or I use um, a point called 19, which is also a 10, which is a 1, which is bringing in energy. Or like for another gentleman today, I used a point called 17, which is 1 and 7, which is bringing in energy, uh, bringing it in to perfection. And when you make it 8, it's magic. Um my number system is very different from Paisley's. And by hitting these certain points with one hand and then going through both sets of fingers, I start with the pinky, work my way to the thumb on both hands, um, I get really in-depth information. I can tell you medical history. I can tell you past, present, future um, It's amazing the information I can get and the confirmations that I've been able to get from individuals about the information that I have gotten from them is mind-blowing even to me. It's like, wow, really? (laughs) That happened. That's cool. So very exciting. Um, Very, um, for almost all my clients today that, that did that particular exercise with me of opening the door, it really kind of opened their eyes to old patterns, things that were things that were getting in the way of their potential growth and potential ability to reach their higher selves. And it was anywhere from mild arguing as to, no, I'm not like that, until Spirit was like, oh, yeah, let's call you out, and we called and spirit called them out on some things. And then um, there was another gentleman who just needed to know that family was there and how he got to where he's at. So That's cool. It's it's an intense process. It is but it's and really healing. And I would walk past and um, I'd see Paisley with the person sitting down and Paisley be rubbing her shoulders and the person be blubbering all over the place. And I thought, well, that's awkward. I think I'm not going to go look over there because she's kind of freaking me out, actually. And uh, <laughs> she's really hurting these people. I Paisley or Skeeter? Works. Oh, sorry, Skeeter. Yeah, I'm sorry. Got the wrong names. Um, We're not interchangeable. We're very different, James. You are, and that's what she said. (laughs) Skeeter said you. Yeah, your numbers were different. Absolutely, I've got a couple people in the chat room: Craig and Lisa Marie Presley, and they're saying that they've been calling in, and the lines are busy. Oh, for crying out sakes! Look at that. The lines are busy. Yes, I'm not even in the chat room. They're they're yelling at you in the chat room. (laughs) Well, I can't help you with that because all the lines here are open on my end and uh yeah that's a little bit weird a lot of yeah Yeah. no there's been a lot of stuff going on up here i mean my computer is completely unresponsive right now um i the minute i get the internet to come on the computer itself turns off so um 
next year everyone come to the Oregon Ghost Conference because obviously your stuff will be guaranteed a ghost of some sort. Oh, yeah. I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> to mess with you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this is crazy. Here. Uh, let's see. Sally, are you there? Hello? Sally? Hello? Oh, for crying out sakes. Um, I do have a caller here. I have two online. Hey, Christopher, can you say hello to see if the audio is working here? Testing, testing. One, two, okay. three. Okay, that's not hello, Christopher. Uh, hello. So, <laughs> that's better. Sally, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Excellent. You can go for... A skeeter and Paisley. Oh boy! Oh boy! Where do I start? <laughs> well, do you want a numerology reading too? Oh my gosh! I totally remember. Um, like, I remember numbers. Is, is that what it is? No, you give. Well, Paisley, go for it. You explain it. So, Sally, when I do a numerology reading, normally the information that I need from any of the callers that call into the show tonight is their birth name, like on their birth certificate. So, is Sally your nickname or your birth name? That's a nickname. Salim is the real name. Yes. And then as you see, uh, James, I don't know if you saw it on Facebook. I did a friend request. Should I type in? I'm going to type in my my name. Is that cool? Sure. Uh, And then I would need your date of birth. Uh So the month and the day and the year of your birthday. Can you tell me that on the air? It says 3779. Okay. And then did you have any questions? Well, the numerology thing, like, I I just woke up from this... uh, I keep having these reoccurring dreams, and they're just, I have no idea. I remember numbers a lot from them. Okay. Did you have a question? If you were going to go talk to a psychic, did you have a question for the psychic? Yeah, like, what do these numbers mean? And what does going over this huge bridge mean? Um, I, I don't know. I think it has a lot to do with my past. Yeah, so you're looking for someone who does maybe dream interpretation or something like that. Skeeter, can you speak to this for Sally? Yeah, I can try. Oh, well. I mean, vivid. I don't don't know. I mean, I'd have to maybe give you a little pass to run over or something. No, just give Skeeter a couple of minutes. It might work. Kind of what I'm getting, it, I the the one thing I'm 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 being told right now by spirit is that you kind of need a little help with a path, a guidance. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost as if you're you're kind of backpedaling a lot more and wondering why you're not going forward. And it's it's a lot of repetitive thought. Is, oh, yeah. um, you keep going back to old ideas and hoping that they patch out something new for you. And you really kind of need to break this cycle of repeating old habits, old old paths, old methods, thinking that maybe if I do it this way with just a slight tweak, it'll work. You actually have to break out of that mold completely and start applying new chains of thought, new lifestyle, new everything in order to break out of where you're at. Does that kind of make sense so far? Yeah, yeah, but the the new things are, are the most difficult part due to uh, access to, well, the root of all evil is what they say it is, money. Well, it it's not just money. It's actual thought process. Um, you, you've thought yourself into a place that you need money to get out of it. Mm-hmm. And yes, there's, there's a need for a new job, there's a need for new experiences, but there's also a need to 
to start thinking about how to live your life in a different way. It's trying to understand that where you are mentally is more in your way than where you are materialistically. Is yeah. is that making sense to you? Yeah. It's yeah, mentally I'm stuck. So yeah, that it, you that are the part as well. Um, one of the things that you really need to start telling yourself is is I can and coming up with reasons how you can do it instead of saying how you can't or cannot do something. You have a really, I, I apologize if I'm wrong, but I'm being shown that you have a habit of talking yourself out of things before you even get started. Oh, that's the easiest it's thing like, to do. Well, yeah, but that's not the best thing to do. Yeah, well, I know. Getting out of a comfort zone is very, it is, it, well, when you're when you're already uncomfortable, it, anyway, um, it, it's like you can't, it's true, I can't get any further. And that's what I have believed for several years, and you see how old I am, so. Um, yeah, but you know, Colonel Sanders was pretty old when he started Kentucky mm-hmm. Fried Chicken. He was in his 60s, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Kate. So... Age Mike? doesn't really have a whole lot to do with it. I joined the Mounties when I was 32. Well, I'm way older than that. One, I always get those excuses, too. But, um, because, I don't know, you get to a certain level, and from my past, it's like, I dwell. You dwell, and you dwell, and you're like, oh, if I do something, like, it's new to me now, I could fall into what I fell into before. It's well, the new. trick is, is to avoid falling into that stuff. Well, um, you don't want to fall into anything anymore. You actually want to start deciding things for yourself in a proactive oh. way. Hmm. But... Really though, money is has a, a lot. I mean, if I didn't, if I was sitting there, they're telling me that you need to stop really worrying about money so much and start thinking about lifestyle. I know money is a big thing. That's something that you're really focused on, mm-hmm. and the the law of attraction is basically if you welcome money in, money kind of comes as as it's most needed. But if you're sitting there banging your cup going, give me money, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, mm-hmm. um, spirit has a tendency to kind of frown on you and gets a little pipe because spirit's like, um, it's not about the money, it's about the lessons. Yeah. And you haven't processed the lessons. And you, like you said, you like being in your comfort zone when you're already not comfortable as it is because things are rough around you. But the truth is, you really, really need to understand that comfort zones are beautiful, but nothing grows there. And you need to grow a lot right now. You oh. really need to take time to review past lessons. You have a tendency to repeat bad habits because you're not taking in the lessons. And that's why you're caught in this chaotic loop. It's the minute something good comes your way, you... you immediately absorb it and then you're left wanting more um, there's a really amazing short story called the rocking horse mm-hmm. and it's this young man who's who's in a home where they're constantly needing money and he figures out a way to put himself in a trance riding his rocking horse and he can see which horse at the race is to bet on and the bets are made, and he, he brings in money, and his family and everything are constantly going, oh, this is great, we got the money we need, but we need more money, we need more money, we need more money. And he says it becomes basically the mantra of the house, we need money, we need money. Well, it doesn't matter how much money you throw at it 
until, because the problem's never going to change. What you have to do is you have to change the thinking of the house, the thinking of the people in the house, the thinking of what the real problem is. The real problem is you're trying to live one way and it's not working for you. You have to figure out how to live a new way. And one of these new ways is taking a step back from what you're you're trying to constantly redo and taking on a new life path, oh. reevaluating where you are. And I know that's not what you want to hear, but this is the message you're going to get. And this does involve humbling yourself, making some apologies, getting help to get you through where you are right now, um, burning some bridges with individuals who have a tendency to abuse your good fortune and your good, the goodness of your heart, and start rebuilding yourself. Yeah, it should matter, though. I mean, because I haven't gone out these doors but about once or twice a year since 2011. That's just to go see the doctor to get meds. And other than that, there's like a 200 population out here. It's not, it's not like I can go out and, you know, take a walk even without being like kind of nervous or scared. Or, whereas I'm from Florida. I'm in Kansas now and I'm from Florida. I'm Flor- in Florida, I basically lived it up. You know, I lived a lifestyle, you know, starting from my teens and then ended up on the streets in 2005 until 2010. And... It's like I think back to the days where, you know, the teens and the 20s, and I want to be there because I never thought that I'd end up on the streets, you know. And I think, you know, hey, my mom, you know, desperately always tells me that I'm a piece of scum garbage, you know, for making the choices that I did, falling into the drug crowd, doing this and that, you know, the rapes and everything else. I could write a whole big book on it, but it's. I keep thinking to myself, you know, what can I do back in it? You know, my teens and my twenties, it was so easy to have, you know, not just material things, but I had confidence. Um, I wanted to be alone for the most part, but I had boyfriends, you know, it was just this thing, you know, when you're that young. But right now, I'm back to being alone, but not having that kind of lifestyle to where it's... Well, you can't go back. That's that's the unfortunate thing about life. You can't go backwards. If we could, many of us would be living very different lives. Now, you got to look at all the lessons that you've collected during that time, all the things that you did that did work for you and all the things that didn't work for you. Um, I'm, I, I'm going to ask a question because Spirit's encouraging me to. But are you in a position where you could get state assistance or possibly a social worker nope. to assist you at this time? Not at all. The Kansas laws even took my uh, food stamps away to, to, due to the fact that I don't have a job. Of, uh, their law says um, I don't have a, if you don't have a job, uh, 20 hours or more working at minimum wage, which is 7.25 or more per week, um, I get nothing. Nothing, absolutely nothing, regardless, unless I'm 64 or older or if I have kids. I've never been able to have kids. I don't want to anyways. And so, therefore, again, that's, you know, I, even the, you know, federal thing. But do they, do they have a program that helps you find a job in no. order to meet those qualifications? No, not in this. Because um, I know in some states. Um, I, I've been in programs like that myself, and I do know yeah, I that they to. do refer you to organizations, usually nonprofits, that help you build your resume, help you find job training, and help you oh. locate opportunities to apply for work. Right, but there is the the thing is the location. Everything is two hours or more away from here, and having no transportation again, stuff, but. Um, I could ask for transportation, but if that is, if I, you know, give out the money, what's the point of going to make it if but I can't? You know? I, I, I'm going to interrupt you. I'm going to interrupt you really quick because I'm, I'm throwing out solutions out there. And instead of telling me what you can do, since you can't do that, you're t- giving me more and more reasons why you can't. 
And, I'm and this is what spirit is calling you out on, is that you're very quick with the can knots. Right. And very slow with the cans. Because, yes, because I'm always disappointed when, I, when I've let this lately. I've tried you know, even calling this clinic uh, thing. So and do you live in a, how small of a town do you live in? Is it even incorporated? No, it's, um, it's in Kansas. Is it unincorporated or is it incorporated? What we have out here is a Walmart and a couple of gas stations. The rest is a um, farm. Okay, so if you have a Walmart, you're incorporated. That means you're an actual town or city. Yeah, if it's, it's an actual town or city, do you have access to Internet, right. even if it's through the library? No. no okay. I have, yeah, I have it here. Okay. Uh could if I jump? you have access to the... Yeah, go ahead, James. Yeah, I've got to jump in real quick here. Um, I've got a bit of a lineup behind you, but I'd like to know... Um, Paisley, did you do the numerology on this? Caller? I did. Um, I just don't have her first name because I'm not in the Facebook chat room, so... Oh, for it's crying out of six. Okay. <laughs> I typed it in there. Okay. Yeah, she said she wasn't in the Facebook G chat. James, are you in Facebook or no? It's... Uh, it's, no, here on Skype. it's on Skype. It's uh, S A L I M A. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, so from this information is, I'm just gonna cut in for a second, Skeeter. Um, no, when I look at, do. Thanks. When I look at this birthday combined with your the numerology of your birth name, Sally, um, what comes up really strong for me is that. Um, you would have been through a lot of difficult hardships um, in your lifetime, things that really challenged you. And you would have been feeling like you were overwhelmed by all the trauma and all the drama. Um, you may have suffered from depression or um, addictive behavior um, or feeling uh, victimized by other people. And um, I think, you know, when Skeeter was talking about, um, you know, what Spirit's telling her, like about, about what you can do and what you can't do. Uh, it's a really tricky position because I would say because of your birthday and your name and there there's there can be some imbalance in this birthday in that um, you will feel like you want people to help you and you're open to that help. Except the only person that can help you is yourself. Yeah. If that kind of makes sense. And it's a it's a hard pill to swallow. For us to do all the hard work that goes along with that. Um, yeah, and I think that's kind of where Skeeter was going with this because um, you're very sensitive. You're very compassionate. You're very open hearted. And what happens is you turn around and you'll offer help to other people like in a heartbeat. You, you They don't even have to ask you for help. If they need something, you're there for them. Except you don't, you, you sometimes sabotage yourself. You're not really there for yourself. You're not taking care of Sally. There's things you need, and you give those things away to other people, but you don't keep them for yourself. Mm -mm. Does that resonate for you at all? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it's all about self-care, self-care, so taking responsibility for what's going on in your mm -hmm. life in every aspect, taking responsibility for the financial situation, taking responsibility for the relationships that, that you currently have, like, and 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 pumping up your game. Yeah, it's you, really it's really. Um, what I say the most difficult part is uh, family. You know, people. A lot of people have family drama, and that kind of. Uh, when I was um, when I went to see a counselor, I remember her saying, "You know, there's this thing called the parent tape, where like I've really everything negative or positive." that your parents have ever said to you as far back as you can remember. Uh, you keep rolling it around in your head because you're supposed to have, a, you know, a, in, a, you know, the perfect world, you're supposed to have some loving, caring family, not somebody who demeans you for any of your own choices that had nothing to do with them whatsoever. But yet, it keeps getting brought up and brought up each time I talk to my mother and, uh, you know, she's like saying, oh, I'm not responsible for you. Well, but and then stupid things like, uh, you know, I love you, but I don't have to like you. And I don't like you because you are on drugs. You are a street whore. You know, everything 
just, you know, and then I'm like, and then I see my roommate here. He has the most adoring family. Not once, you know, do they become any kind of dramatic like that. And uh, that's what I, like, earn for. And I know I'll never have it because, well, that's just the way it is. And he gets flabbergasted. And he himself gets annoyed from hearing, you know, my own family talk to me like this. And I don't see how he can be annoyed when I'm the one in the position. But I've, I guess I've gotten accustomed to it. And uh, it's it's me again. Um, I, I hate to cut you off, but I... I really have to let you go. I've got an, another young lady here, Kate, who would um, like to get a reading. Okay. Well, thanks very much. Yeah, Sally, thanks very much. Keep in touch. Right, everybody, we've got about uh, seven or eight minutes left, but and if this next reading goes a little bit longer, we'll, we'll drag it back in. I will, and on, over the... Uh, the break at the top of the hour, I will work on trying to figure out why people can't phone in here and get a lo- or get a busy signal. Maybe I will um, move around some of the people in our um, Skype room here and uh, call them back and organize it a little bit better. But uh, right now we have uh, Kate, and Kate's really cool because she actually manages the old Wheeler Hotel, and uh, she has heard things that go bump in the night and um it's it's actually very very cool and she'll be here just a second when i throw the headphones on her slide up to the mic and... hello hi kate how are hello. you i'm doing well how are you good you're listening to our show i am <laughs> awesome yes. did you have a question for skeeter or myself I, I really, to be honest with you, I didn't. Um, we're just chatting about having a um, a reading, and I've never done anything like this. This is all this is a little strange for me to hear the reverberation while I'm talking to you. Sorry. <laughs> and anyway, I didn't have anything in specific. I just, uh, I just thought this was kind of cool. This is all new to me. Awesome. It, it it's is a very us. different experience. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Curiosity. Could go either way. Um, would you like to get a numerology, um, set up some numero- numerology with page like while I lay out the cards for you? D- sure. I have to be totally honest with you. I don't know what numerology is and how it works. That's all right. <laughs> that's okay. We'll, got, we'll, t- we'll hold your hand and walk you through it, Kate. So, is okay. your birth name Catherine with a K? No, no. My name is actually Elizabeth Kathleen. <laughs> okay, Elizabeth. Okay. And um, what is your date of birth? Uh, 53172. Okay. So, I'm just going to run the numbers really quickly on your name and your birthday. So, just bear with me. Um, and Elizabeth is. Okay, do you want so me to go ahead and do. Sure, go ahead, Skeeter. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, the there's three cards that came up automatically for you, mm-hmm. and um, I I I'm going to tread very carefully because I already told Spirit, you know, I do know what the Wheeler is, and they're like, yeah, we know, but read it anyways. <laughs> so, one of the things is is that you really do living overlapping worlds. That was the first card that came up. Hmm. You live in a place between spirit, those who are grounded and still wandering this earth, and our plane, as well as other planes. It's not just limited to just spirit and ghosts. Mm -hmm. Uh, You've got the full service at your place. You should really advertise that. Come here and get the full deal. (laughs) Um. The neat thing about you is that not very many humans are as comfortable or as open to these ex- these experiences as you are. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of neat. It's kind of like I see you walking into a library and the books are almost alive and you're like, oh, this is normal. <laughs> and I you like just it. welcome each one to tell you your story. Yeah, yeah. And that's really what you ask of everything that comes through the Wheeler, for it to tell you its story. Yeah. 
and you're a collector of these stories. Well, I am a writer. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for doing this service. In fact, there's a spirit with me right now. He's going, she is so wonderful. She listens to me. She's patient. I love her. She's just, tell her we love her. Tell her thank you so much because we just love how patient she is with us. Uh-huh. Even when we're being naughty. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> There's that curiosity um, again. <laughs> yeah. And the next card that came up, you're really tied. You're you're kind of something that um, was actually in a conversation I was having earlier today, and that is the gray zone. Mm-hmm. You don't really see spirits as good or bad or benign, or they just are. And your heart really does open up to all these spirits, and you change them through that love. Mm -hmm. You give them a certain dignity and respect, whether they're earthbound, whether they're their spirit, whether they're whatever they are. You give them that right of dignity. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then for that, they're trying very hard to support you and help you grow by bringing the right people to you to help expand what it is that you're doing. Oh, that's interesting. So they're really trying hard to show you a lot of love the mm-hmm. best way they can. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. I love it. That's, that's interesting. And they want to let you know that you're getting some really good growth coming soon. I don't know what's in the works, but you're going to get a lot of exposure really soon. I love it. And I it's love- really going to help you. Uh, you're the third and person who some, said something similar like that to me in this uh, two-day span. <laughs> oh, wow. So well, that it. means there's something to it. Yep, I love it. <laughs> it's great. It's um, nice to have that confirmation, too, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. And the other thing that they want to tie to this, um, I don't know if you're getting to do some restoration, some restoration work or not. Uh, uh, but they're personally. showing you that you're looking to either, okay. Well, there's, I mean, there's I guess something that could about... be up for interpretation, really. Definitely a lot of soul restoration. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Whatever it is, they're just using the word re- restoration, and that you're going to be okay, and they give you your, they're giving their blessings for you to do what you need to do. Oh, I love it. That's good. That's nice. Ah, huh, that just gave me fuzzies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, and you ready for your last card? And then I'll hand you back over to Paisley. Okay, sounds sounds good. Okay, last card. I'll make it sweet and simple. Yes, you do have healing gifts. Hang on, I think I'm being told it's break time. It's break time, and uh, when we come back, I have one more question for you skeeter on behalf of uh the young lady here but for everybody else uh stay tuned and i have some phone numbers i'll be calling you guys back and uh get you stacked up in the break once i clean up everything so hang tough we got about a six minute break coming and uh have fun Hi there, this is Dave Scott, and I would like to invite you to listen Monday through Friday right here on Spaced Out Radio. Three hours a night of the top stories with the top guests, ranging topics from UFOs to ETs, ghosts to Sasquatch, and everything in between. We are live every night, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. So come on in and take a listen at SpacedOutRadio.com. Spaced Out Radio will take you out of this world. Hi there. This is your psychic medium, Joanna, and I would love it if you would join us every other Sunday on Spaced Out Weekend. With host James Tyson, we'll bring you personal psychic messages on two mediums and a large. Questions about love, life, career changes. We would love it if you would come and join us live. Call in and listen in for the experience. Allow us to open the doors to your other side. Two mediums and a large. Heard only on Spaced Out Weekend at spacedoutradio.com. 
Attention Spaced Out Radio listeners. For only $5 a month, you can join Spaced Out Radio Space Travelers. Your membership at spacedoutradio.com will give you access to a private fan area on the website, get you a monthly newsletter, draws for monthly swag, and a whole lot more. Sign up today to become a part of the Spaced Out Radio experience. From coast to coast to coast, Blacklight Uncharted is taking on the paranormal across Canada. From ghostly hauntings to the UFOs flying above in conjunction with MUFON Canada, they're closely investigating what's going on in the northern skies and checking out the apparitions that walk among us. Check out our videos right here at spacedoutradio.com. We want to know your thoughts, we want to hear your experiences, and we want you to share your stories. The answers are out there, and we intend to find them. This is Eric Markham, news editor for the Spaced Out Radio's The Encounter Online. We have put together a great team of writers and journalists from all over the world to bring you top quality paranormal stories, from alien encounters to the latest conspiracies. You won't find any of that fake news here. True stories and top notch reporting as we look to bring these experiences to the mainstream. The Encounter online only at spacedoutradio.com. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. Patrolling the Pacific Northwest, we are always on the lookout for the strange and unassuming stories that real people are experiencing. Hi, I'm Vincent Zunza from Pacific North Weird. Me and Alexandra Sullivan have teamed to bring to you those odd stories that never seem to make it into the mainstream. Stories so weird that we'll leave you scratching your head wondering, is this real? It's as real as it gets with Pacific North Weird. You can watch our videos right here at spacedoutradio.com. Find yourself constantly looking up in the sky, looking for answers? Have you had extraterrestrial contact? Are you an abductee? Looking for answers to your experiences? Hi there, I'm R. Keith Andrews, Spaced Out Radio's resident ET expert. Join me live the first Friday of every month where I take questions from the Spaced Out Radio chat room and help you understand those from the far off world. It's two hours of knowledge every experiencer should listen to. Hope to see you there. The third Monday of every month, Spaced Out Radio is going to bring you a different look at everything paranormal. Welcome to The Reporters. Jim Mallard, Vanessa Hogle, Denise Garcia, and Christina George join me, Dave Scott, for a look at the weird and strange from the other side of the microphone. We'll break down ghosts, UFOs, cryptids, and the people investigating them. The paranormal media has never been heard like this. Come listen to The Reporters. Hey everybody, this is Patrick Webster Small, and I'm here to bring you the Webster Phenomena every Saturday night, live at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. If you're looking for aliens and extraterrestrials, well, we've got them. Big and tall, short and small, you're bound to find what you're looking for. So join me on the Webster Phenomena, right here on Spaced Out Radio. Hi there, this is Jolene with Reveal It Reiki and Readings, and I want you to relax. Let me help you chill out and get in touch with your body, mind, and soul. In this busy world, sometimes we need to let go, and this is where I can help. Visit my website, rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivuletrnr, or my Facebook page, rivuletrnr, to set up an appointment for relaxation, Reiki, or readings, no matter where you are. It's time for you to make time for you. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? 
Tonight's edition of Spaced Out Weekend is brought to you by SpacedOutRadio.com, where you can now sign up to become a Space Traveler member. Now, for the final time tonight, here's Spaced Out Weekend's James Tyson. Welcome back, everybody, to Spaced Out Weekend. I am broadcasting to you from the terribly haunted and wonderfully well-kept Old Wheeler Hotel in Wheeler, Oregon, just south of Seaside, down the road from Astoria, and a couple of hours to the left, if you're coming north, from Portland. And uh, been here having a good time. And on the phone, we have a couple of people lined up behind Kate. And uh, we still have Paisley going to do a quick reading uh, numerology. But she had Kate had one more question for Skeeter. And uh, I'll be throwing headphones at her right now. So stand by. Just talk amongst yourselves. And then we'll uh, get there and... Uh, Hello. Have a sit. Oh, thank you. Hi, Skeeter. Hello. Uh, Ske- hi there. Hi, Kate. It's Paisley. Oh, hi, Paisley. <laughs> I, I had so a So I'm not question. sure, Skeeter, if you were finished, you had one more card to pull for Kate. Oh, yeah. And I um, did have another yeah, question. Yeah, but we're, we're on a time crunch. So I'll let her ask her question. Oh, perfect. sure. Did, did you have a question for me? Because I've got your numerology in front of me. I well, actually, I oh. think my question is for Skeeter. I I really okay. um I lost a family member last uh, last summer, and I was just wondering if you were getting anything there, or if he was coming through, or anything. Um. Let me take a moment on that. Why don't you get a, your reading from Paisley real quick? Okay. While I try to get that person to tone in. All right. Sounds good. Tune Thank in. you. Sorry. No worries. Thanks. So, Kate, I can um, tell by your birthday when I look at your numbers um, that you really enjoy work that is super, super challenging. So, something that's very busy and very social and very engaging. Yeah. And I would say that the more chaotic and busy it is the better work it is for you because you love to resolve things and solve puzzles does that make sense for you absolutely you just nailed it okay and i know you mentioned on there earlier that you're a writer Mm -hmm. but i would say you have strong artistic abilities in many many areas so for example music should come easily to you Mm -hmm. um languages should come easily to you um it could be like painting or pottery or stained glass photography, photojournalism, no. lots lots of creative things. Yeah, I, I definitely have um, a creative soul, but uh, my life is half over, so I've got another 40 years to learn the music and the, <laughs> the language and those kinds of things. I'm actually learning Spanish now, so we'll see. Oh, perfect. Okay, good. And um, I know Skeeter was saying that um, when she was – getting feedback from spirit um, that you have a lot of patience with them. And when I look at your birthday numbers, I would say sometimes you don't have a lot of patience, like outside of spirit, like dealing with people. Sometimes you, um, you can get very impatient with other people. And it's because the way that you learn and the way that you think and the way that you process information is very fast compared to some of the people around you Mm -hmm. and other people have a hard time keeping up to you. Hmm, interesting. Does that resonate I, for you? I guess that does resonate with me with um, maybe people outside of my circle. So perhaps. Right, because mm-hmm. you're, you're going to surround yourself with busy, fast, you know, mm-hmm. uh, motivated uh, individuals, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm going to guess that you do cardio um, work. Do you go to the gym or do some kind of fitness? I'm the unhealthiest person you know. Absolutely not. Wow. <laughs> Okay, interesting, because I would say then you, you might present as having a temper sometimes. A temper? Mm-hmm. I, I Honestly, I don't think I've ever been accused of having a temper. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, some, some people that have... Outlet, the, maybe. <laughs> yeah, some people that have the May 31st birthday um, will present as having a temper unless they do cardio activity. Oh. Wow. So you may internalize your temper... Like well, you may internalize it. That's possibly the truth right there. I've, I've been known to okay. steam pot things, you know, keep it in. Okay. 
That totally makes sense. But I would say for the most part, you're very level-headed. You do things that are um, consistent and you follow all the steps necessary and you, you're geared towards success. Mm-hmm. And oh, like you that. should like, you should enjoy shopping. <laughs> I should, huh? Darn it, I don't. Do you? But if I should. Oh, no. interesting. No. No, no. Usually someone with this birthday no. likes to buy things and they like to have high quality things around them all the time. No, no. I'm not a I'm not a shopper. I'm not a I'm I'm a homebody. I'm boring. Oh that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna throw it to Skeeter to see if she has her card ready for you. Great, thanks. Um so the first thing I got up is the image of a of a gentleman mm-hmm. and he's at the end of the rainbow bridge which mm-hmm. means he's already crossed over and he's shrouded in what looks like white light uh, and the the card next to him that he asked to be pulled up was that I speak the truth and that you please release Anything tied to him as we speak his truth. Um, The Rainbow Bridge is really interesting. My little brother was gay, and I have, um, (laughs) right after he died, I got a tattoo of a rainbow on my arm. Um, That just filled me with immediate emotion. (laughs) (laughs) Oh well, I'm glad he told me to describe the card because I was like, "Why?" And he's right. just like, "Just do it." <laughs> wow, wow, that was that was pretty amazing. Um, and as far as the truth goes, um, he struggled quite a bit. He was uh, HIV positive, although that's not what killed him. But he was HIV positive and struggled a lot with his health. And uh, uh, in the end how he passed away was um, a medical negligent issue after a surgery. And I think that that has kind of been quietly put away. I don't know if that's what he means though. There, there were other things he says, but he he wants to continue forward. Um, And I'm going to, I'm going to try to say what I need to say without, um, as you gave a lot of information, so I'm going to try to give the message without impeding on the information you okay. just gave. Okay. Because the two cards that he... Well, the next card has nothing to do with that, and he's pulling me to that so that we can move forward. And he says um, his, his grandfather was waiting for him and helped him cross over. His grandfather. Hmm. So he wasn't alone. Well, that's good to know. That's good so there know. was someone there and helping him transition when all of this happened. Hmm. Hmm. Um, and he says at the end it was slow and quiet. I'm not quite sure what to make of that. I'm just going to put that out there. Hmm. If it doesn't make sense, please just put it under your hat. Okay. 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 Um. The next card that he's bringing forward is the Archangel Michael. He says Michael was there, um, protecting him, watching over him, just as he's watched over you. And there was, this is going back to um, speaking his truth. Because a lot of what he did, is a lot of what you did, was helping him expand past his boundaries. And it's societal boundaries and respecting Mm -hmm. his boundaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, The courage it took to protect him as he did what he did, Mm -hmm. as he transitioned through different phases of life, and the fact that you respected his truth. Mm -hmm. He wants to thank you for these things. And he says it's funny because you actually knew what he was before he knew what he was. That's absolutely the truth. And you respected it and allowed him to come out when he was ready mm-hmm. instead of forcing him. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's very true. That's very true. So he I'm, says thank you for that because uh, when I when I came out, it it wasn't jumping in the cold water. Yeah, he he was terrified. Yeah. No, that was that was really hard for him, and the fact that you were like, "Yeah, I know, we're good." <laughs> yeah, that's it made it exactly much more it comfortable. Was. That's that's exactly what it was. It was very much a. There's nothing you can ever say that is going to make me change how I feel about you. So that's very much what it was. Um. <clears throat> um. He's he's actually bringing up something really interesting, and I, I I'm I'm got do you have a certain knowledge of of the spirits and the ghosts and everything around you? You you have a working knowledge of them. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, when he passed, you had a different kind of visitation that you're not quite sure how to describe yet, or you're just starting to find words for. And it's almost, the way I'm seeing it, it's almost like a staticky, glowy kind of something, in, something almost around you, like the whole room filled up with this staticky, glowy energy. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And does that make sense to you? You know, the interesting thing is it, it does, but it does with my mother's death, not not his death, not my brother's. Oh. Um, my mother died 12 years ago, and I had a, an experience very similar to that. So it does make sense, just <laughs> in a different way. He says that what... He says, yeah, but you were, he's just laughing. I'm going to let that one go. I'm just going to say he's laughing right now because <laughs> you're supposed to be paying attention to this because you're going to be awakening to a new level of awareness. Oh, I just got goosebumps. <laughs> he says he's going to do it again, so maybe tonight you'll see it. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I, I have to be honest, it's been hard for me. Because I have not felt something like that from him, and I did from my mother, so it's been a little difficult. He says the the biggest reason why you have probably haven't felt it is because you've been so out of balance since his death. Oh, that's it's truth. almost like part of you was taken away more so than when your mother passed. It says it's almost like someone took one of your legs and and said, "Okay, go now." Yeah, yeah, I can see that. So, understand that tonight when you go to bed, ask your guides and 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 the lovely residents of the Wheeler to please help you find some peace and balance tonight as you fall asleep. I will do and that. And guide you to that and you should be able to make that connection I really want it so I really want it yeah I'll do that um he's giving me another thing for you to look for that could possibly be him and this is gonna I, I'm gonna tell you what I'm seeing um I'm going to work very hard not to add any interpretation to it this is strictly for you but okay. What I'm seeing is a woman in a very, it's almost an antique blue dress. <laughs> and she is being surrounded by butterflies. <laughs> and she is sending up not just these butterflies, but it's little pink orbs of light. Mm. Just out of, just very odd little pink orbs everywhere. Mm. And this is his way of trying to catch your attention as well, to let you know that even though it looked bad, he was already gone. 
And this would have happened either just before or just after his death. <clears throat> Sorry. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. It's... Tell, it's... tell James to give you a hug for me. <laughs> <laughs> I get a hug from you. That was that was an order. <laughs> oh. <Aww. laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm really grateful. I needed to hear something like this from him, so I'm grateful for that. Pardon me, I'm sorry I'm sniffing like crazy in your microphone. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. <laughs> You'll be okay. <laughs> I think you're right. Alright, well thank you so much. And he wants you. You're welcome. And he's got one Mustang, and and I don't know if this is an inside joke or or not. So please forgive me. But he says unicorns are real. You just have to see them from where I'm at. <laughs> That's too funny. I had a um, uh, one of those things that hang from your mirror in your car, smelly thing, whatever they're called, car freshener. And it had rainbows on it and a unicorn on it. And it said, uh, this is an inside joke. Yes, he's gay. So w I wasn't being rude at all. But on this air freshener, okay. it says, I'm not gay. I just love rainbows, which is why the rainbow thing is so poignant. <laughs> and it had unicorns on it. And, and he loved this thing, the rainbows and the unicorns. So... <laughs> Oh, it's kind cool. of an inside joke. <laughs> I'm glad because that that's telling me that he really is. This is him coming through. Then, well, and the blue dress yes. and the and the butterflies definitely meant something as well. Awesome, that, for sure. Well, I'm glad he came through for you. Then, yeah, so am I. Thank you so much. You have no idea. This meant meant an awful lot to me. It was completely my honor. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to do this for you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. But you're welcome. All right, you. I got to <laughs> And thank you, Paisley. I got to hug a pretty girl. You're welcome. It was from Skeeter. Oh, it was Skeeter? Oh. Okay. Skeeter gives me all the good stuff. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we have. Uh, I okay. You watch the table for me. <laughs> oh, that's that's good. Um, Ron J. Ron J. Okay, Ron J. is probably running to the phone. Huh? Where? Where? Hi, hi. You're on. Oh, it's your on. turn. Skeeter, Baisley, hello, Ron. Oh. Hello. Hi, Ron. Hello. Did you have a question for us? Not at this second. I'm going to shut my microphone off. Oh, okay. Okay. Are you so still there? He shut his mic off. So I will oh. try. To, I will try to get um, Tran back here. Stand by. Standing by, standing by, Mr. Tran will be here shortly. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Sorry. Oops, sorry. So, Skeeter, how many readings did you do today, girlfriend? Um, I think between the, the three I did in person and the few that I did on, um, online, I probably did seven or eight. Wow. Wonderful. Hello, Tran. But luckily the ones online were quick. <laughs> yes. Hello, Tran, Hello. you're back. Yes. Give me one second. Okay. Oh, for crying out sakes. Okay. We'll give you a second. <laughs> so. All right. I'm gonna have to you listen to the show and and hear what the reading to Kate for Kate was. Uh, uh, look, just watching her, it was like, wow, that's she's getting one of Paisley's "I'll Make You Cry" readings. 
Uh, James sorry, it was Skeeter. Skeeter who was you know, for her. you know what? It's okay. It's it's whoever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll I'll let I'll let Paisley take yeah, credit for making Pais- her cry. <laughs> Paisley's my mom, for goodness sakes. James, who's Skeeter? James. All right, hi everybody. Well, it's about time you got hi. back, Fran. Yes. Sorry, you <laughs> caught me off guard there. I was like in the middle of doing something, and then it was ringing at the same time, so I was trying to scramble oh, to get the I headset and works. everything. Okay. I will let so you did go. Did you have a question for Paisley or I tonight? Yes, I do. I am. Um, so I don't. The last time I had a, uh, I think I was talking to the Skeeters. Um, for spiritual, uh, you know, uh, questions. Uh, today, I like to uh, find out more about uh, my uh, num- numerology charge. Sure. And so, um, Tran, can you spell your first name for me? Is it T R A N? That's my last name. Okay. What's and your first name? It's Hong. H O A N G. Okay. And when is your date of birth? January first. 1983. Okay, did you have a question for me? Um, mm, yeah, I mean, I do, uh, I wanted to find out about how um, I have these, uh, I've been struggling with these um, things. I, I've grown up, I always wanted to have more discipline. You know, I had a lot of personality traits that I like to get rid of. So I wanted to find, you know, ask you how do I, you know, get rid of these bad, um, what is it called, habits? Okay. And, yeah. So um, I would say, like, your birthday is um, prone to addictive-type behaviors. Um, so you may overindulge in things. And it could be anything. It could be um, somebody who's addicted to playing video games or somebody who likes alcohol or food or drugs. It could be workaholic. I, I can't say what the addiction would be, but it would be something where you would feel like you're off balance. And it's an interesting birthday to have... Um, because you're very independent and you like to pull back away from people and spend time on your own. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now so and then I do like peace and quiet, but I can't believe that's the first thing you say was addictive personality because that's just hit it right on the spot. And I can't. Yeah. This birthday uh, with your name, the spelling of your name and your birthday, the numbers um, lead towards addictive behavior and sometimes um, depression or and mental health issues sometimes. So so you'll you'll be very much affected by your outside world. Um, so if people are too loud or too harsh with you, you'll feel very hurt by people, like you're very sensitive to be hurt by people. And it's interesting, like, your question that you're asking is how can I get rid of these bad habits? And I would say this, they're not bad habits. Like we all have positive attributes and negative attributes and we can just hope to, you know, keep working on ourselves so that we can be more in our power. And sometimes for you, what happens is that you give away your personal power to other people. And it, and the reason would be because you don't like conflict You love harmony. You love everybody to collaborate and work together and get along. So sometimes you give up your voice and don't say anything because you don't want to create conflict. Does that make sense for you? Yeah. It's more like I don't know the right time or when is the appropriate time to, to, you know, express my opinion and when is not the appropriate time? Because I, I used to, I, I struggle with that. When I think it's the right time, it turns out not to be the right time, you know. So it's, the, my timing is really off. Okay, I would, I would say your timing is not really off. But one of your life lessons, being born on January 1st and with the spelling of your your birth name, these three numbers would all indicate to me that you like to follow the rules, you like to be structured, you like to do the right thing, you don't like to hurt other people because you take responsibility very seriously. And it and the life lessons here are that you come into your soft, clear voice and let other people know what your needs are. 
So what happens is when you're not getting your needs met by other people, you may um, tell them that your needs aren't getting met and they won't like it because usually you don't say anything. You're more quiet and you may even present as being a shy person, but I would say looking at your birthday, you have the ability to step into your power and be very, very confident in many areas of your life and not present as shy, but you may present right now as being a shy person because you haven't you know, taken over your voice yet. So I would practice using your voice in relationships that don't mean that much to you, like with a cashier or with a waitress or with people that don't know you very well, as opposed to trying to step into your voice with people that are in your close circle, because um, you might feel overwhelmed by them. Does that make sense for you? Yeah, yeah, it does. But um, right, I mean, right now I'm already uh, improving as far as you know, like getting rid of bad habits. But then I'm getting, you know, I drop one addictive personality to another like eating and yes you know for because it's comforting you know i'd rather do that than drinks and stuff like that because i don't yeah so so it's interesting because a lot of people that um have issues with um alcohol and not using alcohol because alcohol turns to ethanol in the body it, it basically when you're using alcohol you're ingesting a lot of sugar and so when you stop alcohol, your body still needs sugar. Sugar, So it's like just kind of trading off one, one addiction for another. But I would say in general, you have an addictive type of personality. And my, my birthday patterns are have some similarities to yours. So I, I totally understand what this is all about because it's like me. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So just keep focusing on the positive and um, work on stepping into your voice in small ways rather than not saying anything. Because what happens is you hesitate when it's time to speak and you don't know, you don't want to hurt the other people's feelings or say something that's inappropriate because you want to say the right thing and do the right thing all the time to keep the harmony. And um, yeah, starting to speak up for ourselves and use our voice, it is going to create conflict. And not speaking up for ourselves is going to create conflict down the road. So it's better for you to say something now so people can get used to hearing your voice. Okay. Okay. And, and Skeeter, did you have something to add? No, you were actually really spot on about him learning to use his voice. That was the very first card I pulled just in case you wanted me. So really loosen the pace way on that one because that one's important. So uh, basically... What you're saying, because every now and then I do, I have a little gut feelings, and um, I uh, sometimes I try to follow it, but sometimes I don't. So is that what you mean as far as um, getting yeah. my voice and yes. following my instinct, basically? Yes, you have strong intuition, and so the the part that's tricky is the trust part about it. It's because you don't trust yourself. You think you know, but you don't want to say. <laughs> you don't want to take the action. Do you have an opportunity at all to spend any time in nature? Because nature is something that would really ground you. Yeah, I, I do. I, I go for a walk a lot. Mm -hmm. And do you do you walk quickly? Do you do you quickly like do you do cardio work workout while you walk, or do you walk slow? I would say in the middle. Yeah, if you can go a little bit faster, it'll be better for you because it'll help release that kind of energy that you don't need. Okay, yeah. I, and um, water's a very calming tool for you. So if you can walk or hike near like a lake or an ocean or waterfalls or a pond or something like that, because water's a great tool for you. Do you get enough sleep? Um, right now, yes, I do. But I Good. do struggle with sleep like, you know, yeah. for a while. But right now... I am getting enough sleep. Yeah, because people with your birthday need quite a bit more sleep than most other people. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a like um? Do you have a uh, lucky number or something that I can uh, gravitate to as far as you know when I make a decision? Because I used to when I was younger, my dad told me my lucky number was number four and mm -hmm. nine. Is that true? 
Um, well, for you, I would choose a number seven. What? Really? Yeah, seven is um, seven is a lucky number in the universe for many things. And if you just even go online on Google and look up, you know, why, you know, number seven, the meaning of number seven, it'll give you quite a bit of information about a lot of different things. So that's my... And I'm uh, going to back that one for Paisley because the number of the card that I drew for you is seven. Wow. That's a, that's a new thing that I wasn't, wasn't expecting. Well, I'm glad you asked the question. Good for you. You're using your voice already. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. And, thanks uh, for calling. Yeah, yeah thanks for calling back in. Skeeters. Yeah, no problem. I love the show. I, I love what you do. I listen religiously. And, uh, you know... Oh, I wanted to ask uh, Skeeters about her websites. Oh, did you have a question? Yes, yes, I do. I wanted to uh, ask uh, uh, you about your website so I can go on there and check it out later. Yes, it's bluemoonweaver.com. Weaver, like for weaving clothes. Blue Moon Weaver dot com. Okay, got it. And, and Paisley's is Skeeter. easy. Okay. I want oh. to ask uh, Skeeters about. Um, I have a little concern. Uh, something going on in my life recently, and uh, it's gonna affect me in the near future, about one or two years. I was just wondering, do you have been? to pick up on anything if it's going to affect me positively or negatively? Um, I, I laid out a spread of cards for you. And the, the biggest thing is what's impacting you right now is learning to own your voice and learning to own yourself like Paisley was going over. That's what's affecting you immediately. Other things that are affecting you even more so than what's coming is the fact that you need to learn to plan and organize and manage your own life. It's really hard right now for any true path to really hold tight because you're you're kind of um, the best way it's um, spirits showing me is that you're almost flipping channels. You get started down something and something interrupts so you get discouraged quickly and you jump to the next thing almost immediately. And you're yeah. not really putting a lot of foresight into it. You're just working on what's next. So taking the time to really focus on what needs to be taken care of now, making a solid plan for yourself, both financially, mentally, spiritually, socially, just really looking into your life and how you need it to go for yourself and following, following through on the plan are really big things you need to focus on right now. Because right now, things are so delicate. Anything that I was to tell you about what's going to come is not going to come through because within a week or two, you're going to hop channels again. Hmm. That's why you're having such a hard time with addiction is that you're, you give something up, but you instantly need something to fill it back in. And instead of confronting what's actually causing your need to be addicted and distracted by something, an outside source, whether it's eating, whether it's drinking, whether it's whatever you're choosing to be addicted to at that time, you're going to the addiction rather than actually fixing what's causing the addiction. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. But uh, as far as on the addiction in... I'm I, I'm improving a lot, so I actually well, picked up uh, trying to get addicted to yoga. So that can't be a, that's not a bad thing. Well, so. 
I, I'm not encouraging you to get addicted to something else, whether it's healthy or otherwise. I'm encouraging you to look into why it is that you're actually going from addiction to addiction to addiction. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that you're looking for a comfort, a support of sorts. Okay. Um, you really didn't get the comfort and support you needed from loved ones. You kind of tore, they didn't exactly build you up or tear you down, but their lack of comfort and reassurance yeah. really didn't save you from tearing yourself down. And in order to mask those feelings, in order to distract yourself from those feelings, you've gone into these addictions and into these destructive behavior patterns in order to distract from the pain of this lack of emotional comfort that you so desperately need. Yeah, you you just hitting it right on the spot. It was just it took me a while to uh, as when I was a adolescent I struggled with that, but now I'm growing up. It's not have, it doesn't have much of an effect uh, but it is still uh, for a long time it did. Yeah, and now it's now you're at an age where you need to sit down and go, okay, how can I get the comfort and reassurance that I need so that I can no long so that I don't have to find my next addiction, whether it's positive or negative. Where am I going? How am I going to do this? And a lot of that is going to go back to finding your voice because as you find your voice you're going to find out who you are. And as you discover who you are, you're going to take some things out that aren't so great and you're going to build up things that are good and you're going to start developing your ego. As your ego gets a little bit stronger, a little bit healthier, you're going to find a way to connect with other people that you're going to see the things in them that you'd like to see in yourself and that's going to help you find a way to build within yourself a way to comfort yourself, a way to reassure yourself, and a way to love yourself so that you're not looking for outside stimuli to feed that need within yourself, but rather than going to outside sources, be on the inside, not on the outside. So I hope that helps you and gets you on to the next thing. Yeah, it does. And hopefully uh, next time I hear from you, you'll be a little bit more centered on that. Yeah. Yeah, I've been uh, listening to your, uh, your advice from the last time. So I'm oh, you know, working on it and, and being a little bit more meticulous with my planning and think about it more carefully. Although it is, I do have a lot of plate, um, um, a lot on my plate right now, but slowly um, it will be sorted out and... Uh, and following your advice, and uh, and uh, hopefully it will be uh, everything will be okay. And I want to thank you for your guidance. Oh, it's my honor and my pleasure. Um, you have a fantastic night. Okay, thanks, thank Tran, you for too. calling. Okay, thank you, bye. Beasley. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Tran. Thank you. Bye. Paisley and Skeeter. Yes. Yes. How is everyone? I know that there's somebody here who has been crying. I don't know what Skeeter told her, but that's just crazy. I like Tran when he calls in. He's very, he really mellows everything down and everything seems to be. He does. Brings everything in a nice, tranquil energy to him. That's, it's very, very cool. Uh, so thanks, Tran, for, um, for following the shows and uh, for calling in when you can, because it uh, it's a good vibration you bring you being in, and and I hope that uh, Skeeter and Paisley are helping you along there. I'm really mellow now too. <laughs> uh, Don't fall asleep. Too late. Um, well, I, I know that <laughs> this is this is still one of the most haunted places on the Oregon coast. Well, thanks to. Nathan were one ghost short in the hotel, but um, I better not tell the owners that. The I'm kidding. There, there. It's 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 a very neat little hotel. 
Skeeter, next time, this is the place to stay. I will stay there. Yes, it's also cheaper than where you're staying. And it comes with food. Yes, so. but... It's also yes, a 25-minute drive. It's easy to yeah. run across the street. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's 25 minutes uh, or half an hour down the road. But, man, what a place. Uh, I'm probably sure that you can't sleep as well as I do, but <laughs> they're going, Skeeter, wake up. Skeeter, wake up. Wake up. So what other um, paracons, what other things are you going to, Skeeter, coming up? Um, I have got, um, I will be doing a gallery reading in April at um, the Magical Garden in Tacoma. I am going to be at the Port Gamble Conference yes. in October. I will be there, Before too. Before that, in September, I will be going to the Paranormal for Forest Moon Paranormal Conference in Concrete, Washington. As, and I will be joining yeah. you in Canada for the SOR event. That's the week and after. Yeah. Yes, that's the week after. So I will probably be hitchhiking with you or anyone who loves me enough to smuggle me across the Canadian border. Oh, you oh good luck you with have, that. Wow. You haven't seen our wall, have you? <laughs> yeah, go with James. Yeah. He knows yeah. people. Well, you guys are all looking south. We built a wall. And, you know uh, what? I don't blame you. <laughs> and I, I'm pretty sure we charged you guys for it, and the president took it out of the Coast Guard budget, I'm pretty sure. Or one of those things. He probably um, did. Yeah. It's, oh, well. It's okay. I know the budget was crashing there for a bit for them. or It came out of, um, you know, green energy budget or something. But it's a, it's a nice wall. It's, it's got a big sorry sign on it. It's like in French, too. But, uh, yeah, it's actually oh, nice. a really, <laughs> really, really cool. I'm looking forward to Fort Gamble. I was actually considering going to San Francisco last weekend uh, for a uh, Paracon down there. I'm also, uh, are you familiar where that uh, Sasquatch conference is in Washington State? Oh, yes, I, I am. And I know which one you're talking about because I was looking at going to it. Not as a as a reader or anything, but just to go and and go squatching. Go squatching. So, go squatching. Oh yeah, we we got to get Eric Cooper up there and do that too. He'll he'd like that. Uh, yes, he would. No, was that a Pacific like Northwest to... one or? Um, but I think it's the Pacific Northwest one. The Pacific. Uh, I I Pacific look North. it up, but my internet is still being insanely not working. Oh well, no, it'll it'll work as soon as we uh, probably about five after midnight on our side here. It'll <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it'll turn back on. It'll be like ta da. Yeah, it'll it's Sucker. fine. It's it it'll be perfect. Right as we shut everything down as normal. Yeah, don't even yep. ask me what the planets are doing, James, because I'm no, not telling I'm you. No, I'm not gonna. Are you kidding? Don't make me go there. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's just as crazy talk. You and your you and your thing in whatever it was called, retrograding stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say it. Nope. Uh, oh. um, <laughs> I think I think that one, no, I can't remember. It's a, uh, I thought it might have been a May, that conference. I was going to go to, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, Contact in the Desert, but it was just a commercial frouhaha looking at the uh, hoops you had to jump through to get there. And the stuff yeah. that you had to sit through, you had to sit through some guy with a mustache, uh, um, what was it, Groucho Marx, no, he's, oh, George Norrie, that's, you had to sit through his, his, buy a ticket to his meal at, like, lunch where he talks and sings, and then, um, there was only about two people I, I really wanted, I was interested in seeing, well, I was also interested in riding my motorcycle down to Joshua Tree, California, but it's just, you know, it's just, uh, I'd rather do that and just not go to the conference. Uh, but the one in San Francisco looked good last weekend, but uh, I, I stayed with Paisley's conference last weekend. And uh, yeah, it's, this is the season. I think in May, uh, mid, mid-May, I'm uh, 
taking Dave Scott's spot uh, for a couple of days as he goes out to a conference in Boston. So oh, I know nice. he's looking forward to that, and uh, he's going to be speaking at a at a uh, conference in Boston. So yeah, it's it's that oh. time of year we're bouncing all over the place. So if anybody out yeah, there has a, day, I'm going to be at Crypticon. Crypticon, where's yeah. that? At Crypticon, that is here in Seattle. Okay. Um, I am going to be a reader there. I'm going to be a creepy reader. I'm going to go ahead and let my dark side out and scare everybody. Um, <laughs> and it's the tenth. It is the tenth anniversary of the Seattle Crypticon. Um, it's an amazing gathering of spooks and cons and all the fun, scary stuff that makes us go ah in the middle of the dark. Yep. Unless you're me and you're just like go away. I'm trying to sleep. Um, <laughs> Yeah. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. Yep. There's some it's really cool guys event. there um, coming out there. Uh, was it a godfather of the zombies himself, I think, was uh, yeah. heading out there? Uh, what the heck was his name? Crap. Uh, George Romero. Romero? I think he's, yeah. yeah, the godfather of the dead, king of the zombies. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a, they the had a. The original Walking Dead. Yeah. The Godfather of the Dead, Dead, Dead. Okay, that's just silly. Doug Bradley, who who is but, Pinhead. Um, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of cool guys out there, and um, well, they're all, all actors. It's not like they're really spooky, scary guys, but. Uh, uh, well, there's some that are, you know, just fun and creepy in person in general, and then you put the makeup on them, and yeah, they're really entertaining. <laughs> yeah, and. You know, it is, you've got a lot of the Dawn of the Dead uh, actors showing up. But honestly, I like going to those places. They're a lot of fun. You get a lot of cosplay, um, which can be quite revolting sometimes. But uh, the <laughs> you, you squeezed into that, mister? Mm, you know, you're 700 pounds, a little large for that thong and dragon's tooth head gear. And, but whatever. Yeah. The, um, but it's fun. It's everyone's having a good time, and uh, I just the one thing that bothers me is you know having to get look. They're autographing pictures. I should go get one. Oh, hold on, I have to pay how much for one of those? <laughs> yeah, it was well, those, it, those are good it, fun. it depends on the actor because some actors are really cool about it, and other actors are not. Yeah. So I was talking to one of the guys I, I'm staying here with, or with here, is uh, Jay Verberg, or, uh, Verberg, who you may remember if you did that. He was uh, in the TV series Ghost Mine. Uh, he lives in Portland, and he is a uh, paranormal investigator for uh, Oregon Paranormal. Just hilarious guy. And he was autographing headshots and giving them away, and he got kind of pulled aside and said, look, you're making us look bad because we're all charging people 20 bucks each. He said, oh, shoot. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, Jay's, uh, yeah. Jay's hilarious. He's super, super, yeah, he's a super good guy. And if you guys haven't seen Ghost Mine, he was the greenhorn who was out there plunking yeah. away on the, on the mines. Uh, super good guy. And uh, they've got a really good crew here at Oregon Paranormal. And uh, those uh, just lots of respect for these these guys. Lot, they put a lot of really good work in. They actually teach this stuff. Actually, and they, they they put a boot camp or had put a boot camp boot camp on for paranormal investigations here at the old Wheeler Hotel. And uh, you know what a place! What a place to put on a a boot camp for paranormal investigation. And what I heard too is like going down to the basement and finding that there's a bat flying around and everyone's screaming. So that's always good. Plus all the ghosts that were oh, up yeah. here. Actually, during the boot camp, um, one of the per- people staying here who's quite intuitive, uh, she, woke, she was woken up in the middle of the night by a little girl who she described as curly dark hair and whatever outfit she was wearing. And the little girl said, uh, can you make me a sandwich? I'm very hungry. And at which time the oh, wow. human said, well, just across the hall is the kitchen. You can't go make it yourself. <laughs> and she, the little kid left and she <laughs> went back to sleep. So 
kind of hoping that's not the kid we <laughs> sent back today because it <laughs> well actually I am she's uh you know if anybody l- looking for her family it's uh just one of those things you'd like them to move along so yeah we've had a a pretty odd night tonight as far as uh as far as energy goes here on spaced out weekend to mediums and a large how did it go for you paisley it went by really fast yeah what uh and uh christopher uh Chris, christopher who had called in originally he he texted me he said while he was online here he wasn't feeling good like it was he was nauseous and as soon as he hung up he felt better isn't that wild yeah there's a lot going on yeah no kidding yeah it's crazy crazy yeah, so i i couldn't get my ipod to work i couldn't get my laptop to work and when I tried to get Skype to work on my on my phone, it refused to work. So the only way you were able to call me was directly on my cell phone. And I've had to sit here with my cell phone plugged in so it wouldn't turn off. Which is pr- probably now... It's he- charged. It's heated up to the point that you could cook eggs on it. No, it's still really cold. It's actually freezing cold where I'm at right now. Oh, oh it's I think I have haunted. a friend with me. Yeah, that's what I was going <laughs> to Well, we can get Nathan back and clear everybody that hangs around with you, uh, which is... Uh, We've got to get Nathan back on. That was uh, really cool. That was something that uh, I'm happy that uh, Elizabeth uh, brought him on. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's his spiritual dowsing. And uh, I'd nev- I had never heard of that. That was... That was a fascinating thing, and um, if we get a chance to have uh, him back on there, it, it, it's it's just one of those things that you know every every time I turn around, I'm learning something new. So it's it is pretty cool, all these different things, and uh, it's it is what it is. It's just a a wonderful way of kind of poking around and uh, learning new things and. You know, even some people in the chat room, Catherine was saying, well, dowsing, isn't it? Was you know, with the two copper thingy, thingy booze and you kind of walk around and you find water or something. But no, Nathan Maine is the guy who does dowsing and spiritual cleansing. And uh, it's awesome. Absolutely awesome. It's awesome. And um, yeah, if you get a chance uh, to Google Nathan Maine, M-A-I-N, and dowsing and spiritual clearing, uh, lots of fun, and uh, definitely going to have Elizabeth. Uh, well, Elizabeth is definitely going to have him come back. She's known him for years, and uh, a good guy, really, really good guy, and very interesting. And of course, when you learn something new, that's that's the good thing, absolutely the good thing. And oh yeah, um, I, and Paisley, Did what do you have? Did you have fun on your panel, by the way? I beg your pardon. Did you have fun on your panel? Yeah, I did. I was uh, I was on a panel about hauntings in the Pacific Northwest, and I kind of did the Canadian version of it, uh, just north of the border. But a lot of the stuff that we liked, and I liked, was still in Washington State, the Olympic Peninsula, down into Oregon and, and Northern California. So we all had similar interests in in the hauntings and uh, different ways of different opinions on maybe what caused them and why they were here, but it's uh, it's it's a really, really neat area for hauntings. And I think, and in my opinion, it's the, uh, it's the water, it's the moving tides, and this close to the... Uh, looking in the Oregon coast here, can you imagine these huge rocks on the coast and the waves, monstrous waves coming in and smashing? They are absolutely beautiful if you've never seen something like that. But the energy behind each wave every seven or eight seconds apart you couldn't help but glow in the dark if you were a a being that required a little bit of energy to 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 exist or to be seen paisley when's your next um psychic fair oh our next one coming up is mid-may for mother's day weekend april 13th and 14th in coquitlam Okay, so those of you in the area 
of Coquitlam, British Columbia in Canada. Check out paisley.com and we'll see what's going on there. And for everybody else, uh, keep a hold or get a hold of Skeeter at, um, I was going to say Forest Moon. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get back to you and you keep an open mind. All right, that's it. Let's roll. And hey, 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 hey. Let's be careful out there. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Dave's not here! Headline edition, July 8th, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile found sometime last week has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. 